like, dude, what if you killed him? Uh, like, I would feel like a god amongst men. If I, if I actually <laughs> killed him in the fucking, the first death in MMA, North American MMA, I would feel like, I, I, that'd be pretty badass. I, I don't want him to die. I'm just saying that I wouldn't feel bad. That's his own choice. Are you ready for this? It's another edition of KFC Radio on the Barstool Sports Network. As you listen to this today, it is Election Day 2020. A day that I didn't think was ever going to get here. <laughs> and now that it is here, you're starting to realize that it doesn't really matter because, you know, it's one way nothing's really going to change. So, you know, people, like everyone thought of it as like some end point, and it's really not. It's, well, it's a, it, it, it's a changing point. But it's certainly not the end of goddamn anything. No, it's not the end of anything. It'd also be interesting if things go the way they're projected to go, I suppose, which would be a Biden win. I mean, shit's going to get weird in the last oh, two months. Oh, bye. Like, it's basically like, it's like, it's like you go, you're partying in a hotel room, right? And you're mm-hmm. trashing the fucking place, right? right? And you're just fucking up your rock star ev- shit. Everyone on the floor hates you. Yep. And then the hotel management comes up and they knock on the door and you answer it and they go, listen. We're kicking you out of here. You got two months, and then you're gone. Yeah. <laughs> Guess what yeah. I'm going to do? Right. I'm going to start ripping down yeah. walls, bitch. That's what I mean. That's what's so funny is that it's not like an immediate, you know, it's a, it's a day. of It's like a line of demarcation, but that's really it, yeah. you know? Uh, so it's going to be ugly one way or the other. I mean, I guess. I mean, there's a, we were just walking here from Broadway. And like, there's a significant amount of places boarded up already. Yeah. They're bought, they're, they're bought, uh, battening down the hatches on this one. Um which is crazy that it's just like, buckle up. We might start fucking, we're going to burn shit down again. <laughs> it's going to get crazy. Uh, especially though, when you like, when you, especially when you walk New York City and it's like, you, you see, like, we walked from on Fifth Avenue, there's, you know, the, like the jewelry stores and the high society, you know, fancy places. And then you go a couple avenues over when you get into the Barstool office and, you know, you're back on like, Skid Row. <laughs> it is. It's all in like a five minute walk. But I wouldn't say we're in Skid Row. No. There's like a homeless person or two. There's a homeless person or twelve. I, I think that I think we have regularly we have like two homeless people outside. There are other homeless people in the city, but I, I think I mean our, we have our, the our guy little in the block alone. We have those. We have a little like they make little box homes. There's like there's like four that are usually like steady. There's the homeless guy. There's the one legged guy one-legged on the guy, rascal. Yeah. There's the dude who always has his butt crack out. You know that one? No, I don't know him. You would know him. I mean, I just know him as like butt crack guy. There's the woman who's like we used to call it the queen of the shanty town. Yeah, but like the shanty town's gone. Yeah, well that that well, I don't think they're as concentrated, but I feel like that there's that woman who's I've seen her pre corona, post corona. I don't know if I know what she looks like. I feel like uh you know, there's a decent amount of them rolling. And then when you get closer to Penn, I mean I, I always bring it up, but those guys with the needles in their arms just fucking they bother me, man. That really fucks with me. <laughs> I don't like it one bit. Cause there's something about the needle that like just takes the drug use to a whole other level. Yeah. It, there's there you're not well, I was gonna say you're not gonna catch like rich people or like or or, or uh, you know, like put together people with needles. That's not entirely true, but I feel like that's a pretty good there's a, like that's a line that a lot of people don't cross. Well, they don't you know? use it in their arm. They, that's, between the toes, you go, you go toe, yeah, you toe it toes, up. Yeah, yeah. There was a uh, a girl I know who went to college. I uh, went to college with. She said, which is even worse if you ask me. Oh. Like it gives me the heat. Oh yeah, I mean just, I don't think it's good. It's just to hide it, right? Like, yeah, yeah. It's not like it. I, I feel like it's gotta hurt. No, I would. I, I would. It must hurt so fucking. Bad. I think yeah. it's usually because they like they've used the one in their arm yeah. so much it retracts. Collapse long. Uh, collapse. They can't yeah, but it. like all. But like rich people do it to hide it. Yes, yeah. oh, there are people like they collapse it and they just you don't want the track blow out track their veins. Marks, yeah. But I think, well, I mean, the, I feel like heroin is usually like you're addicted and then you can't get your hand, you don't have the money or you can't get your hand on pills, so you right. you take the jump to the cheap shit. But I don't think people start off with that. You no, know? I don't think so either. Uh, but you know, I don't know. I say that, and it's like some people are you know. Start with marijuana. It's rich. a gateway drug. A, I went to high school. I went to elementary school in the nineties. <laughs> I, I know the how you get to that, heroin. Like, you, you know, you, you start with marijuana. Could you imagine they they were pushing that? Like, yeah, if you smoke this joint, like one day you'll be doing heroin between your toes. <laughs> get the fuck out of here. Uh, but we, the there was a, a tweet that went viral recently talking about the the things that rich people do that's considered high society. 
And if you catch a poor person doing it, it's trash. And like the drug use is kind of that, you know, I would, I would argue that anytime you're doing needles, like you're being trash, but you could catch a, a, a crew of like, you know, uh, like Harvard lax bros who are just like doing heroin. It's I I, yeah. I don't think it has to be here. I don't think it's it's strictly connected to heroin. I think it's any drug use whatsoever. You, if you're, doing if you're it, rich and you do rich, drugs, you it's like are cool. yeah. You're and at the party. You're, if you're poor, it's, even even somebody who's smoking weed. Like if you like live in like a shitty house and you have like Doritos next thing you're smoking weed, it's like fucking loser. Yeah. And then if you're like uh, a rich person, who's like yeah, I smoke weed. They're like yeah. oh, he fucking burns, dude. Yeah. This guy's well, so cool. Well, especially it also depends too. Like if you get like medicinal grade dispensary weed versus like the shitty swag off the street. Yeah. You know, it's like that's. But you're you're all doing the same thing. You're all fucking. You're all smoking the hot leaf, the devil's leaf, trying to get a little high. It's basically it's basically everything. That's the answer. What is considered classy if you're rich and trashy if you're poor? Everything. Everything. It doesn't matter what it is. Because, because well, dr the, drugs is particularly great, though. Because it's like you can have a big pile of blow at a fancy party, and it's like, oh, wow, this is like, you know, rappers and like, yeah. you know, you have all the money in the world. This is what you do. And then, you know, you can be in the shanty town, and it's like, again, but it's everything. It's like drinking, like anything, like smoking, right? Like, 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 you, like someone's like some poor person. So swearing, <laughs> swearing's a big one. Like, if you're like, oh, like you. Like this fucking guy said that. It's like, oh, what a trash bag. Mm -hmm. And if you say like, oh, he's cool, like, because yeah. like it's it's, well, it's, it's, it's all a, common it's not man, necessarily so to speak, rich stuff. and poor. It is like a cool, cool versus like trash sort of right. thing. Right. Because I wouldn't necessarily say swearing makes you rich, but it does make you like a cool guy. If you're well, like, nothing, none of it makes you rich. It's a what it's if what you, you are, do yeah. while you're rich. Yeah, but I think that's more like it's a cool thing to curse. It's a cool thing to smoke cigs. Right. And if you are, you know, basically any addiction you, you have. And and it really Which goes back to the, the, the Tom way. Brady thing. Like, it, it's if you're good looking too. Yeah, you know, it's like if you're a good looking guy smoking a cig, like you know, uh, I, if I if a good looking guy like pulls a fucking bottle and a, a a brown bag out of his fucking coat and drinks it, it's like whoa, that guy he's cool. Yeah, and a <laughs> bum does that, it's like oh, get your it's, fucking it's life 10 together. Ten a.m. on a Tuesday. But, and what's dude. the difference? Girls would fuck that guy, but not that yeah. guy. <laughs> Clothes is 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 one too. I feel like you know you can you know, uh, the the jeans and the sneakers that went viral within the past couple of years, where it's like these are they're intentionally holes in them, mm -hmm. intentionally scuffed up, and you're paying eight hundred dollars for the Tom Gucci, Ford, the Gucci nineteen uh, nine hundred nine, which I didn't think was that expensive. I don't which know. One? I don't know what pantyhose usually cost, but like. Gucci had like pantyhose with runs in them that were 190 bucks, uh -huh. and people were like, oh, and, if, "And if you saw that at the club and people knew, it would be like, oh shit, she's got the new what Gucci." And if you see them on the street, it's like, oh, that girl's a whore. She's a, she's a literal <laughs> she's, prostitute. She's, she's coming home at 6 a.m. Yeah, she's right a now. lady of the night. <laughs> the clothes, the drugs, the the. Uh, what were some other ones on that? The, the, that tweet really did knock it out of the park. I, I was saying earlier though, I, I I was saying that I don't think I don't know. Where I stand on addiction nowadays. <laughs> this should be good. I just I just don't think there's such a thing. I now obviously there is. We're joking here. But the like You don't believe in addiction. It's like if you think you addiction is a uh is, is what a farce? As long as you have the means and the time to do it, then you're not addicted. Well that if, is if it, entirely true. Right. If it comes in on other well, things. Well, no, that's not I mean it's not entirely true. But, but I understand what your point is. Yeah. It's yeah, like it, it's it's a matter of it's like I'm addicted to water and food. <laughs> but I can always access it I can, and always I can get afford it. it. And I got nothing to do right Honestly, now but I have a glass of water. Food and I'm not talking about like diabetic people who can actually be addicted to sugar. I'm talking about just food in general. We're all addicted. Yes. We're all addicted to food. <laughs> Guess what happens when I don't when I don't get it? When I don't get my fix? I get withdrawal symptoms. <laughs> I get irritable. I get angry. I get nauseous. Uh, you know, yeah. Because yeah. your body needs its fix yeah. <laughs> of food. And I, I'm addicted That's to true. oxygen. You know what happens if I don't breathe? You freak out. My head starts to hurt. My vision goes blurry. <laughs> I might even die. Okay. So I think I. But because, but then you yeah the, you um. You can die from all these things, and that would be the X factor, you know? Like, yeah, you have the means, and you have the access, and you keep doing it, but then you die from it because you were addicted to it. You would die, yeah. Yeah, but I'm going to die anyway. So, 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 let's say you overdose one day and die. You overdose die what? from I don't know. But Food? I don't know. Drugs? Okay. You have access to all the drugs you want. If you were to overdose and die, would you? I don't know you, if you're I have access me, to all the drugs. You, you didn't, you're not dying. You're not One overdosing. Time I was you're just, just dying from life. You just happen to be doing drugs. One time I was <laughs> buying drugs. This is back in Boston, probably like seven years ago. And I was like, "Yo, man, you just you get steroids too?" <laughs> like, what, dude? It's like, 
No. No, I'm like, selling no. you cocaine for the party, man. <laughs> I don't have Prima Bowling on me. Do you do he, it? I mean, that's got to be the dumbest question. He was like so time. taken back. And like, I, I honestly didn't think it was a crazy question. I, like, you sell, I mean, I guess it's like, you hey, sell, you're selling illicit shit. Hey. So. Well, you got you got some fucking you got the cream to clear you got, you got the that fucking, an, andro what, what on you got it? that anabolic What's steroid the one with a W that's the one I've done Winstrol <laughs> you got fucking Winstrol on you man he's like no here's a no, here's a at, half uh, ounce uh, of uh, weed I'm you not fucking a, weirdo I'm not Balco dude <laughs> I sell ecstasy to kids <laughs> I'm in Boston I sell ecstasy to everyone in college <laughs> I'm not I'm not the Bay Area fucking <laughs> laboratory company. <laughs> fucking, you have steroids. Like, I, I would be. I'm, I would take my drugs back. Get, no, you, you don't you, deserve you've this. You've clearly been overserved. You're asking Carlos for fucking. It was Carlos. Carlos would always come in and he'd have one sip of beer I offered him and he'd leave just to be polite. I guess so. You, could, you know what's funny? You were like, oh man, I, I feel like I got to offer my drug dealer a drink, and that guy leaves, and he's like. This one fucking client of mine always offers me a beer, and I feel like I have to stay. How many things in this world are being done like that, where it's like, why don't we just cut, them, like, cut that out? Yeah, you know, I, I could I, have once I once I realized the, the trend that he was always just having a sip of beer. I could have uh -huh. just stopped offering a beer. Never stopped. Always just get me like, you want a beer? You always like, yep, perfect. Here you go. Surprise me. I'll dump this. How about down that? Even by the way, uh, to to go back to the rich people, poor people thing, like even like bu the buying of the drugs. You know, it's like. Like rich people, you you probably when you get on a certain level, you have either a, a, a like a guy who fetches it for you, or you have like a delivery service. But even like rich guys will be like, I gotta go meet this guy like on the corner. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, <laughs> and I gotta slip it to him. He slips it to me. Whatever. When you get real rich, I'm you know you have like your drug guy. I would imagine, right? Yeah. I would like think you, so. and that way, if anybody gets caught or anything, you take the fall. I when we were in high school, we used everybody used to buy weed from this guy named Shakes, and uh, we were like. We went right over, up and over this bridge into the Bronx, and he would, uh, I mean, we were young. We did everything way too young. Uh, we would, like, get in the car with him, and, like, he would just, like, drive around the block with us. But we were, like, actually, now that I'm thinking of it, you know, I thought of Shakes as, like, this drug kingpin, you know? But we were, like, 16, 17. He was just, like, having kids, like, hop in his car. I think that's a pretty regular age for weed, isn't it? Yeah, but I'm just thinking of, like, you know... I was like just jumping in like a black fucking SUV with these guys in the Bronx and, like, <laughs> and just trusting that they were just going to drive around the block and then leave us back in the parking lot of Wendy's. And he always did. And he always did. It was always fine. But I was always like, I looked back on it and maybe, maybe Shakes wasn't some fucking Manuel Noriega type. Maybe he was just like, yeah, I don't know. Like he was probably like, he played like a day job. It was right. just like, oh. yeah, I also sell like dime bags to these kids. You know? <laughs> but in my mind, I was like, you know, part of fucking like, Sons of Anarchy or The Shield or something, or it was like when you when running, you first we're running like, drugs, man. Stuff, like, dude, you, that actually reminds me of like, I remember when I would be so surprised when I was younger when a kid, when like someone wouldn't buy me beer if I did like a hey mister. Like, if someone tried I, to I, hey mister me right now, the moment I turned 21, if you tried to hey mister me, I'd be like, get the fuck yeah, out of here. That dude. is crazy that like, I mean, I guess it's also just like a sign of the times, but I am not going down for buying kids' booze. Fucking you know? strange kids' booze. Like, you know, maybe in like the 90s and early 2000s, it was a different story, but like, Nowadays, you probably go to like fucking jail if you do that, you know. Yeah, that uh, it's it's. Uh, but but remember we talk about like you know the the rush of fake IDs, buying booze, getting into bars, all that shit. Buying drugs is always pretty cool. <laughs> like <laughs> it's always like a little bit of a rush when like I remember buying uh, buying weed from this guy on on the avenue in City Island and it was like in the park like. His name was fucking Anthony Rivera, which I think I can say because there's like 60,000 Anthony Riveras. <laughs> but I was like, this is... But I do remember, oh my God, the first time I ever bought weed from him, he... This is back... I don't even know if they do this kind of shit anymore or if like I was just so lame, I was buying so little. But there was like dimes and nicks, you know? I was like fucking buying like $5 worth of weed. But I was like... Yo, yo, yo. Wait, is it so a dime bag of weed is a ten dollar bag of weed? Yeah. So Okay. But I, I, I didn't never okay, so that was like ten ounce. No, no 10 well, ounce so that, that was kind of what I was thinking. But I remember I was like, yo, like, how much for a dime, man? He was like, ten. Ten dollars. <laughs> ten dollars. <laughs> how much for this ten dollar bag, bro? <laughs> it was like that was clearly the sign that I was in over my head. <laughs> That's like uh, uh Dennis D and crack, D. One, one, one crack, please. Crack, please. <laughs> one one crack rock. One rock rock of crack, please. I love when the guy's like Two hundred dollars. Yeah. <laughs> but even that, like, I know that's a joke, but I was like, I don't know how much it was supposed to be. I have, you know, I mean, it's supposed to be like ten. Is pretty cheap. Yeah. Like, right. Well, that again, that's that's one of the Let's differences in the. Is, what do you like? What do you think crack costs? That's the difference. You know, that's to go back to the rich and poor. Rich people do coke, coke, and poor people do crack. It's the same fucking drug. I think mm -hmm. it's cooked up a little bit different. But when you hear that someone got caught with crack on them, 
And I was like, Dave should probably say, let's sprinkle some crack on him, get the hell out of here, Johnson. <laughs> but cocaine, you know, cocaine is, you know, you're the, you're the life of the party. You're the club guy. You're, you know, hanging with the beautiful girls. You're doing crack. You considered a scumbag and a piece of shit. And it's the same goddamn drug. Just what? You, when you cook up the coke in the, in the spoon, then it's crack? Is that what is that like the transformation? No, I don't think so. No, no, I think you need, there's something else that has to be going on before that. You put something else in it. Yeah, I'm it's so like, it's like, it's like actual I don't know rock. How to, like, I, it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't, this actually doesn't have LSD. The prices of crack. Yeah, <laughs> there's no. Uh, well, like, I mean, it's got everything. LSD is five to twenty dollars per hit. Mushrooms are twenty to twenty five each. PCP what is, that is twenty to like thirty per 20, gram like per like a stem and a cap. Twenty five bucks. I guess yeah. Mushrooms are taken orally and can be uh, ground into your food. The average user consumes an eighth of an ounce at twenty to twenty five dollars each. That always fucked me up too. And you know, everyone knows like it's an eighth. Like an eighth is such a you know, universal thing in in drugs with weed and all that. And it's like weed and shrooms, but I still don't really know how much. That's I have supposed no idea. To be. Yeah, fifteen to twenty five bucks for a dose of MDMA. What's the difference between Molly and ecstasy? What's up? What's the difference between Molly and ecstasy? Anything? Is it just? They rebranded it. I mean, when I was in high school, it was ecstasy. And then when, you know, when we were at Barstool and, like, it was... It I remember was when I was in, like, sudden. middle school, people were talking about rolling. Yeah, rolling with, with disco biscuits, rolling on <laughs> ecstasy, rolling on X or E. And then all of a sudden, it just became Molly. And I was like, well, what the fuck? I'm trying to stay cool here. You can't keep changing the names on me. But the rest of that list, day drinking, so true. If you are a bougie lax bro in college, you're like, day drinking is the best. Yeah. If you're a bum drunk off a fucking fifth of vodka in the middle of the day... You're a bum. Yeah, you're a bum. homeless person. Speaking two languages is a great one. If you are high so society, you're fluent. It, that actually, I think, is it's not speaking two languages. It's speaking. If you speak English and Spanish, people are like, you know, you you're like an illegal immigrant. Like mm -hmm. psh, nobody's ever saying that like you're trash because you speak like Russian and French. Right. It's really <laughs> we're talking about Spanish here. Yeah. They're, they're, these are racist people singling out Latinos because it's not just two languages. It's which two languages? No one's ever going to be like you speak French and Italian, you scumbag. <laughs> uh, hard drugs. We talk and tax evasion is a great one. <laughs> like tax evasion is so funny. You know, like the Ronaldos of the world are just like not nah, not doing it, not paying them. Not I gonna think pay it. The, I always give the soccer guys credit because it must be so. I guess it's. I mean, really, it's on their accountant. But like soccer, when you're playing in so many different countries and play, it's gotta and be very hard. It's gotta be impossible. Yeah, you're getting taxed by like ten different like, entities. Right. Like, yeah. like I don't know. See, I fucked up. I, also I, I forgot to pay my fucking uh, French tax this year. Yeah. I forgot to pay right, my Russian paid, tax. Well, I played one game in right. this one random <laughs> country. I feel like unless you are, you know, like the situation and whatever he was doing, where it's like clearly a scam to get one over on the government. I've, I'm a huge fan of not shooting yourself in the foot. I feel like, as I understand it, ordinarily the punishment is like, all right, just pay your fucking taxes. Yeah, yeah. Like, we caught you. There was a problem. Now back pay and get it done. Why not take my chances? <laughs> like, maybe they ne maybe they'll probably catch you, but maybe they never will. And as, as long as the first thing is like, we'll give you a chance to repay it, as long as it's not like you go to jail right away, why not just be like, catch me if you can, motherfuckers? Mm -hmm. I'll give I love John McAfee. Uh, John McAfee? Yes. Yeah. He was like, I... I owed $50 million in taxes, and I was not receiving $50 billion worth of services. Mm -hmm. Like, that's what taxes are for. I, I, I pay you, and you provide, you know, me with society's societal stuff. And he was like, you're not doing that, so I'm not paying it. <laughs> I was like, you know what? I don't think that's how it works, John, but I respect <laughs> you trying to make this argument. Just like until you actually provide what you're talking about, I'm not going to pay you. And come catch me. Also, I, I don't fucking listen to anything John McAfee has to say because that so, motherfucker owes oh, 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 a dick. Till he eats a dick. Yeah. Eat a fucking dick. Eat your own dick, John mm -hmm. McAfee, because that's what you said. The problem is he said his own dick. Yeah. Right? Because like if he said, I'll eat a dick, like you can do like pig dick or uh, what are they doing? Hard fact. Uh, not hard factor. X. What's the fucking show? Fear uh, factor. Fear factor. You know, I think they ate testicles and you can yeah, like, yeah, eat yeah. a penis. He probably could pull that bet off and, and pay his debt. And if he did that, I mean, now he's probably going to jail or whatever, but if he did that, he would be a legend, like an internet legend. Like, he's, man, he's a man of his word. He John McAfee ate a dick, but he said his dick. Yeah. You got to eat your own fucking dick, John. Now, what if, if, if John McAfee could suck his own dick, as we often talk about on the show, would that uh, clear him of his debt in your mind? I think it would. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to be a stickler. Yeah. I think of eat, like, I'll eat this dick. Like, it's, it depends. If I said you eat a dick, I'm not talking about, like, knife and fork. I'm talking, like, suck a dick, you know? <laughs> so it, under, that, under that framework, I'd allow him to... If you, you he, pay his if, debt to society. And like he lives in the Caribbean, right? He fucking must be flexible. Oh, that dude. Like he does. Wait. wait. <laughs> I, I agree with you, John, John McAfee's probably flexible. I don't think. 
You live by the water. You fucking stretch. You do <laughs> yoga, that kind of shit. He lives in the Caribbean. <laughs> he, he must, must be, be flexible. flexible. Yeah. I think that makes perfect sense. I don't think I'm the ridiculous. I don't think I'm being ridiculous. I, I think, think you are. I think like most Caribbean people, most people who live in the Caribbean. Look at that picture, by the way. That guy can suck his own dick. <laughs> That's a guy who sucks his own dick. Yeah, like he's like he most does people yoga, who live in the Caribbean are flexible. He, he drinks a lot of coconut juice. Yeah, and he he plays in the sand a lot. All these things just scream flexibility. <laughs> You're not wrong. I know I'm not wrong. I mean, like, it's you're not right. <laughs> you, you're, you're, you are thinking... That's that the area I like to live in. <laughs> you're thinking you're more right than you are, <laughs> but you're not wrong. Yeah. Find me a Caribbean person who's not flexible. I mean, I bet we could, but off the top of... Put it this way. Caribbean people are at least inclined to be more flexible than you are. More flexible than someone who lives in Montana, yeah. no doubt. Uh, I don't know about that. I think Montana, you gotta pick people who are... Like, uh, Montana, Wisconsin, you're hiking and shit. Iowa. I think, like, I, like, like some fat Midwest places. Some, Midwest, some I, cold I, Midwest... <laughs> What did Not you just flexible. Google? <laughs> fat, you, Nick just Google like fat people in the Caribbean. Yeah, just to fucking exactly disprove Exactly what I Googled. <laughs> <laughs> no, but those that, people are, That's Doug's and Tank in the Caribbean together. They're on vacation in the Caribbean. That's a completely different story. People like on vacation in the, Caribbean in the Caribbean are fat assholes. <laughs> but people who live in the Caribbean are... <laughs> those guys, flexible. no doubt, are spending the day at the island off their cruise. Yeah. Oh, right? no. Yeah. I was going to say they're... They're at Atlantis right now, but they're staying at the Holiday Inn. Down yeah, the street. they're staying in Nassau yeah. at the Radisson. <laughs> they're staying at the Radisson on Nassau Beach, and yeah. they they do day trips to the Atlantis. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That actually, it is. It is. They're in Eleuthera. Yep. Yeah. There you go. That's that's the that's a you know what? That's, oh wait, no. That's a way. plus size resort. <gasps> it's called the Resort Eleuthera. Honestly, a plus size resort. For, that's a great move for the eighteen to thirty stone crowd. Yeah, that's that's how they, oh, they okay. measure so people. I thought, it was just 18, I thought it was just fat eighteen to thirty year olds. No, that means eighteen to thirty stones. Yeah, which, which is a which, weird way to to measure people's weight. You know, fuck, they put it in kilograms. Uh -huh. One hundred ninety kilograms, I think, is like two fifty pounds. No, three hundred pounds. That's the max. Two fifty. No, wait, wait, wait. One hundred ninety kilograms. It's got to be like three hundred pounds, right? 418. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, you a fatty. You a fat you boy. A fucking wack. Look at those rolls. But that's a great idea. Like, I, I think if I was fat, I would just be, I would be on dating apps for fat people. I would go to the fat resorts. I would just be a fat. Yeah. I mean, definitely. Like, stop trying to be skinny. I was going to say you could lose weight, but that's not no, necessary. No, that's what I mean. Not, I not just, when there's like a fat world. It's like, imagine, the, you imagine, you just, like, imagine you could just transplant yourself to a place where like everyone had your deformities, I guess. Like, if I could just hang out in the... Well, I'm, Fat I'm, people, we love you. You're I'm not deformed. To, I'm about to turn this into my own. I was gonna, like, my, my nose. Yeah. Like, if I could just hang out with people who, like, were my weight and had my nose... It's called the Midwest. Like, I'd be pretty fucking good. <laughs> yeah. I, I well, think so if that's you what put I, me with people who are only at my level of attractiveness... You'd be a 10. I think I'd come out of... Okay. Well, that's like... It's like being... Um, it's like joining the senior tour in golf. Right. Like, when you're 59, you stink. And you're 60, all of a sudden you're the bell of the ball. Yeah, right. You go to the retirement gang and you're still hitting the ball 250 yards. You're, you know, you're a you're a rock star. It's like going to um, I remember where was this? I think it was like a true life or a maid or one of those MTV type docs. I think it was like uh, True Life, I go to Fat Camp. And there was a girl, like within Fat Camp, it's just it's the same thing. It's like mean girls. Like there was like, I'm an, I'm not that fat. So I'm like the prom queen. Mm -hmm. And she was a bitch. You know, she was like mean to everybody who was fatter than her, even though she was pretty fat. So as long as you are, it's like, you know, in the one eyed, in the land of the blind, the one eyed right. man is, is king. Yeah. I, and I would, I, I'm very confident. If everyone would like, say you only let sixes into this building. Guess who's the hottest guy there? You're a six and a half. You're, you're a 10. It's me. You become a 10. I would be one. I would fuck. All those ugly See, that, bitches. That's what. <laughs> that's what sucks about <laughs> all of those hot girls. All of those ugly girls would want me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's why you know we're we're living in the wrong place. I forgot that all that like, both sexes would be that ugly. Mm. I, I think if if you just made all the guys as ugly as me, the girls could I, say whatever. So we need a world where there are very attractive girls who are simply stuck with sixes, <laughs> yes. and then they will pick you to and fuck. There I shall reign. <laughs> And they're upon this rock, <laughs> uh, that's why you know we're in the wrong place, man. Like New York is filled with a lot of hot, hot people. Yeah, like New York and L.A. and Miami. It's like we should be living in you know the Midwest. We'd be hot as shit. <laughs> we would. Be. Well, wait, what's Boston? Is Boston good looking? No. Yeah. So you 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 sh you should have stayed in Boston. Yeah. Yeah. You would be a, a I punched you'd be a rock in class, Boston, yeah. man. You would be a rock star. <laughs> you'd be a smoke. I don't know. I don't know why I came here. Yeah. <laughs> 
I mean, what it, could it, what would you rather have? Like success and stuff, or like occasionally have sex with a girl who's slightly better looking than you? <laughs> Back to Boston, it is. <laughs> Listen, if you made it this far into the video... Which is far. Like, no one ever does that on the internet. Like, it's the end. You made it to the end the of the video. The full fucking video you, you watched did. the whole thing. So if you liked it and you watched the whole thing, why don't you subscribe? It means you like us. Click the subscribe button, because if you don't, I'm going to fucking murder John. And I'm going to like it. Kill him with my bare fucking hands. Yeah. All right, it is election day. This is our election day episode. It's brought to you by Miller Lite. Oh, I feel like people are going to need a lot of these yeah, things. Yeah. No, no matter what side you're on. And if, especially if you're in the middle, you know? But if you're in the middle, you lose. That's what sucks. The rational people in the middle are, like, going to suffer the most. Because at least if, you, if you're on the extremes, you have a chance of extreme unhappiness. But you also have a chance of, like, you know, your team won the championship, basically. Mm -hmm. If you're in the middle, you're like, this sucks no matter what. You know? It's more risky if you're, if you're a big-time liberal or conservative. You are – it's all or nothing. Whereas for us, it's just middle of the road. Ugh. <laughs> so either way, it's just boarded up gonna, shops. You're, you're, if you if your guy wins, you're gonna celebrate with Miller Light. If your guy loses, you're gonna drown your sorrows in Miller Light. And if you're in the middle, you just need something to take the edge off because God damn it, does this suck? And that's what Miller Light does. It just takes it makes shitty situations better. It makes good situations great. It makes it takes a normal night and makes it into a memorable one. And uh, it's always there for you. Rain or shine, red or blue, left or right, whatever. Miller Lite's always got gotcha. you. Uh, you don't even have to go out anymore. You don't even. You used to have to go to a bar. You used to have to go out to the store to get some. Now you can get it just delivered right to your door when you go to MillerLite.com slash KFC. All the delivery options near you. Send it right to your door. Uh, it's great taste. It's less filling. And you're not gonna get. You're not gonna become one of those fats. You're not gonna have to worry about going to fat people resorts only. You're not going to have to worry about yeah. weighing 30 stone. Still going to have this fucking nose, though. The nose is not going anywhere, John. <laughs> Sorry. But the Miller Lite's only 96 calories and 3.2 carbs per 12 ounces. It's brewed in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, so that's that's like what we're talking about. That's the land that we're talking about. But they keep you trim. They keep you slim. And uh, they give you that good tasting beer to make sure that you uh, enjoy yourself or can make a complicated situation less complex, make a fun one, a f unforgettable one. It's, Mil it's Miller Lite. Uh, brewed in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Miller Brewing Company, 96 calories, 3.2 carbs for 12 ounces. Celebrate responsibly. Go to MillerLite.com slash KFC. Do you think we are, uh, do you think that one thing we can maybe hope to, to see less of now is, like, will the celebrities stop? I feel like they've, they made their push, they made their pitch, they made their movies about, their videos about vote and vote for this person. Now, I mean, you can't do that anymore. You can still make videos and talk talk your talk, but at least we will there, we will put an end to the, like, like stop go vote forever? and vote for this person. No, just for, like, this. Well, yeah, they'll stop you know, for now because there's right. no more voting to do. Right. But do you think that they will, like, just stop, or do you think it'll just transition to something else? No, they still got a pandemic to fall back on. Yeah, that's true. They, they, right now... Yeah. Right now, they oh, so it's like, all right, let's get back to the masks. Let's start making videos mm -hmm. about the masks. The Lady Gaga one to me, uh, as we record this, you know, there's still a lot of time left to uh, get your dumbass videos in if you are a celebrity. The Lady Gaga one, I don't even think I quite understood it. Was it supposed to be like you can drive a truck and drink beer and still vote for Biden? I didn't understand it at even a little bit. Yeah, Lady Gaga, like, like not in, a, even... in a cowgirl, like Daisy Duke's outfit. Awkwardly, She's in Daisy Duke's? I thought she was in camo. Was she? I thought she. I, I'm closing my eyes and I'm just picturing like a crop top and short shorts. She definitely had a crop top, but I, I feel like it was Maybe all she camo. Had camo pants. Her, how awkward was she trying to lean on that truck? But she was like, had her arm up, but it was too high. Like, you're definitely yeah. not comfortable on that, Lady Gaga. So she's in her camo. She's got like a cowboy hat on or yeah, like a trucker hat on or something, right? And she's she drinking, and then she's like, I, "Look, I drink beer, but she can't really drink the beer. She just takes a sip of it, and she does that thing where she like leans forward in case she spills it, and then she spikes the beer, and she tells like, you to she vote spikes for a Biden, full beer. and she tells you that she's gonna be in one of the states. I was like, "What the fuck are you talking about? I didn't understand. Like, I was like, am I the idiot here, or is that video that bad? Because is this like satire or some message that I can't figure out?" Or does this video actually suck that bad? In this in this election season, to have the title of like worst video is saying something. We saw Josh Gad, God love him. We saw his naked ass bent over telling you to vote by mail. We had the fucking morons on YouTube getting naked to for Biden. We had, I mean, every 
We had the with the Aaron Paul racism video. We had the Imagine video. We've had everything that you know you can imagine as far as bad tone deaf patronizing and obnoxious. You think this videos. one was the worst? This was I mean it's bad by far. But I think the fucking Imagine is tough to beat. Well, the well because that was I the think, first. Like now we kind of just expect but it. But I but I think this is the worst. That is an understandable like a PR firm got behind that and was like we are making this video. What the uh, Imagine? Yeah. No, that was Gal Gadot's idea. Uh, that wasn't like a. No, it was just Gal Gadot. As, as far as I understand it, it like Gal Gadot. I thought that was yeah. going to be like a, like all those people just did it themselves. Yeah, like Gal Gadot reached out to him, and was like, "Hey, we, we get this idea." Because because Lady Gaga just being like whoever filmed that and them being like, nailed it. That to me is crazy. Like at least they and, and like off this is like their... something we kind of do. Like we not not videos like that, but we have people film things and it's like ah that didn't really work. Fuck it, and we like. Watch it back. Like I just scrap it. Never mind. Yeah. To that, not, that, that, to like, not the, think the that's imagine scrap video they they pulled off. I I don't I they they didn't they did not gauge the response well. But it was like all right, they did like the imagine thing. That video from Gaga is like, I mean everything about it. Like she wasn't like oh I I, I gotta really chug the beer. Let me do that again. Or like or maybe I shouldn't try to put my elbow on something that's higher than yeah. my body. <laughs> like she tried to do a lean on something that was above it and like. It, the whole thing was so bad that her and whoever filmed it, they were definitely. I mean, I guess that's when you get that famous, and you have this. Le we're we're seeing now. If you have a legion of fans that have, if you have a name to your fans, you probably feel like you can do no wrong. Like because those like monsters, the monsters. What's that? Like Louis Gomez. Like Louis Gomez yesterday. on the show, the the legion of skanks, the Skankonia fans, the. Uh, they 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 but they are like a, you know those that's a fan base that I think would also call those guys out if they were like this. This was fucking stupid. Mm -hmm. The Monstars or whatever they call, isn't that Lady Gaga's The Monsters? Yeah, I think it's just Monsters. The monsters. Yeah. They, uh, I mean, they, they're going after Coach Doug's now. Doug's made a great video. Doug's made a spoof video with, he's got a fucking set of tits on yeah, him, he huh? You got some fucking titties, he's, Doug's. Like, Doug's, Doug's goes to the resort in Eleuthera. <laughs> and, and, and they make him step on a scale before he gets in. Like, you might be. You might have to go to the, uh, the next the next. I grade. love Doug's. Just a big fella, a though. Big boy. <laughs> a lot of man Call on it like it is. A big old boy. But I love that, his message of just like, hey, on election day, why don't you mind your fucking business? It's a great message. I think more people could 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 take that message going forward every four years. Uh, but he made that video, put it out, and he's getting flooded with like German satanic Lady Gaga fans to the point that I I tweeted just like making sure people saw this video, and now I'm in the mix, and I've seen it all from the Serbians to the uh, to the Hondurans, the blind people, the 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 Italians, the Jews. I mean, I have I have gone with every country, ethnicity, whatever. I have gone toe to toe, -to -toe with all of them. The, these Lady Gaga witches are prolific. When did you first reply? Last night, this morning, oh, like this seven a.m. That's also what's crazy too. Is like I figured. I mean, look at these weird like pentagrams with the blood and the tattoos and the satanic worshiping, and they're. Um, and they are relentless. I mean, they are, and they and they use this language that I don't even know what it is. That like, down there on the uh, yeah, like I've never even seen that. What is that? Is that Hebrew or is that um, African? Well, this one's Hindi. I saw another Hindi? one. I saw Aramaic earlier. Aramaic is scary. I don't fuck with Aramaic. That's like, isn't that like, uh, you know, that's like, that's like some some Bible shit. Like if you're speaking in Aramaic, you're. I've never. I don't think I've ever heard of Aramaic. I, yeah, I think Aramaic is like. You know, when you got like the stigmata coming out of you, you like speak in tongues. You're talking Aramaic. What? Oh yeah. So where where is it? Where is our Aramaic based out of? I uh, Ar Aramaic. It's called Armenia? the language of Jesus. Yeah, I think it's like some old school Jerusalem, you know, actual rooted in religious type of scary shit. Dude. I, I I've never heard of this language. Yeah, it's it's no it's no good. No bueno. You see Aramaic, Aramaic, you run for the fucking hills, man. It's and now I think it's all just used by like, you know, crazy religious it, it's, zealots. It's spoken in in a time period that I don't even know what that means. What is it? Seven hundred BCE to six hundred CE. Yeah, that BCE and and CE is just in a way of doing BCE and AD now. Oh really? Before the common era and after the common era, because they it's like the non-religious version, even though the marking I think the demarcation is still Jesus's birth. Right. But I think 
I don't know. Right, you know, some people don't want to. It's like separation church and state type shit. That's bizarre. Uh, but yeah, some I mean, old school it, dark it, shit. Bizarre. And but look at these creepy fucking this is, this gifts is your and stuff. DMs right now? Yeah, your, those are my mentions. mentions. My mentions for just for mentioning Doug's. Like I didn't really even say anything about Gaga. I don't think. Maybe I did trash. Oh no, I did. Okay, okay. I forgot. I sent a video about Gaga saying, "What the fuck is this?" So <laughs> I'm kind of in the mix too. But I this mean, one. that one is just a picture of Lady Gaga bathing like. Like, a man is just bathing in blood, I think. And it's Lady Gaga. I mean, it's clearly, like, it's either a human sacrifice or, like, one of those, like, eat sushi off of a naked body yeah, thing. Yeah, whatever it is, she's eating it. Yeah. So, maybe it's blood. <laughs> Gaga's a weirdo. Gaga's a weird one. But, uh, I mean, think think about Coach Duggs. What's his real name? <laughs> we should probably call him by his real name, no? No? Okay, he's Duggs. <laughs> Two minutes ago, I don't even know what he's doing. I don't know what that man's doing other than opening up po back, uh, packages of baseball cards and watching sports and watching and listening to the occasional, you know, Barstool podcast and video. And then talk about a goddamn whirlwind. He has a job. He moves here. And now he's being attacked by uh, you know we're devil worshiping. That ass, by the way. What does that, that mean? That Fordham ass. What? Seminoles. We got three now. Wait, what? Doug's went to FSU. Me, Doug's, and Dion. Oh, bro. Fordham rolls so goddamn deep. <laughs> There's like 20 of us. There are so many. There's so about. many Fordham kids. I would guess I would guess FSU's too now. We, we know what's unbelievable is Tommy Scabelli trying to act like he's the top of the Fordham coaching tree. He's like, my, my, my coaching tree is like unparalleled. I'm like, it goes higher. It goes to me. <laughs> yeah. it, your tree, your branch is below my branch, Tommy. <laughs> Fucking idiot! There are so many of you guys, and and we lost a couple. Uh, Matt Browner used to be a Fordham guy. Yeah. I think there was another. I think that's the other thing too. Is like there's a decent amount behind the scenes salespeople you don't realize. Uh, but yeah, Fordham rolls fucking deep, man. You know why? Because we're just normal people. That's what I will give Fordham. Just normal ass people. It's not a fun time. <laughs> Nothing exceptional. It's not, absolutely not. Regular people. <laughs> it's not fun. We're not good at sports. Not a great party scene. Uh, not like ugly, but certainly not like hot chicks and hot people. No frats or sororities. Uh, sports bad, like I said. But like, there's some bars and some drinking and some normal ass people. <laughs> and that's what always thrives here at Barcelona. Just normal. Yeah, yeah. And that's why we go to war with these fucking wackos. You know, like, all right, let's do it, satanic cult. Let's fucking do it. Because I'm representing for the normals out here. Someone's got to do it. So it's got to do it. Here on election day, vote for the normals, man. All right, let's get into our top fives here. Uh, top five today in the in honor of election day, we're going to do top five presidents. We're going to get our history hyenas on here. Uh, we'll play a little Chrissy D and, and Giannis uh, role playing. Me and John will give you the top five presidents of all time. I'll tell you what, I don't think I can name more than 10. I can name I can name a bunch of them. I Actually, can't maybe, tell you what maybe any we'll of their do that as well. Are. Maybe we'll do our top fives, and then we'll just try to like after we, we're done with us ten, we'll just try to see how many more we can rattle off. Let's okay. See if we can get to all what forty five, right? So yeah, I was going to guess fifty, but that's states so. forty five. <laughs> forty five. So presidents. Uh, that's a little projection about how this is about to go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's brought to you by Viori. Viori is uh, it's a new advertiser for us who is uh, is doing God's work out here because. Nowadays, in general, prior to the, uh, the pandemic, the world was headed this direction anyway. But now, certainly, we're moving towards uh, the world of comfortable and functional apparel where uh, it's, it's cozy, but it's stylish. You can wear it to the gym, but you can wear it to work. You can wear it out on a date. You can wear it when you're hanging with the guys. You can, uh, you know, whether you're active or not active, They've got you covered with a new perspective on performance apparel. Viori means mountain. Uh, so that represents the view from the summit, as they say. The, peak, the, the folks over at Viori are, uh, are looking from the top, and they are providing you with Like the, you on the Fordham coaching tree. You're goddamn right. <laughs> top of the tree. Uh, with a new perspective on performance apparel where it's designed to work uh, and work out in, but also doesn't look like it or feel like it. So it doesn't look like, you know, uh, like why, you know, you should be walking around the gym with a gallon of milk, a gallon of water, and those like cutoff gloves. Mm -hmm. This is like you can wear it anywhere. The streets of Manhattan to the uh, to the the breweries of Milwaukee. They've got you covered uh, with comfortable and stylish, versatile clothing. Everyday life inside the gym, outside the gym, and perfect for any workout activity or any time you're just lounging on the couch. Go to viori.com. V U O R I. 
Viore.com slash KFC and get 20% off your first purchase. That's Viore.com slash KFC, V-U-O-R-I.com slash KFC. Free shipping to any of the U.S. orders over 75 bucks and free returns and that 20% off when you go to Viore.com. Discover the versatility of Viore clothing. You didn't fucking subscribe. So I did it. So subscribe so there's no more blood on your hands. <laughs> it was hard to hold my breath for that long. <laughs> <laughs> you absolutely didn't have to hold your breath. I, didn't want I mean, to you, you really committed, you committed to the you committed to the part. That was a method act. It right also there. wasn't that long. <laughs> like it's, I think I just have COVID. Let's see how long. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see who can hold their breath the longest. Ready? One, two, three. <gasps> yeah. All right. Top five presidents. You want to start us off or what? You want me to start us off? Where do you want to go here? Um. Okay. Uh, sure. It'll be me. Uh, I. Are you looking at a list of presidents? Definitively right now? know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, are you looking at a list or are you going off the top? Uh, I was looking at a list. I'll, I'll go off the top now. Okay. Um, number one is William Henry Harrison. That's <laughs> an easy one. I didn't even know that one. You don't know William Henry Harrison? No. William Henry Harrison is the guy who died right away. <laughs> I think, That's probably why I didn't know. I think he died thirty days into, but his but not presidency. like assassinated. He just got old. No, died. he didn't want to. He didn't wear his at his inaugural address. He um, it was raining and he didn't want to wear a jacket because he thought it made caught him look a cold weak. And died. So he caught a flu, caught the flu and died. <laughs> you know what makes you look weak? <laughs> Dying, <laughs> bro. Think yeah. about that. Like the, the world is just so goddamn different now. Where it's just like, what year was that? Uh, 18, like early 18s? Uh, no, it's not 1860. That, that's Andrew Jackson. 1841. Territory. But not far off. Okay. okay. But like, you could, like, 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 like the, the, the public was like maybe worried that the president would catch the flu and die. <laughs> <laughs> that is nuts. I mean, we kind of just did that. Yeah. Like, yeah the president yeah. caught the flu, like he might die. Right. Uh, well, it's right. not the flu, it's whatever. But you know what I mean. Look at this fucking <laughs> Johnny Truther over here. It's just like the flu. <laughs> we just did that. I had someone say it to me recently. Yeah. You can't do that. Being like, I'm about to say something that's pretty shitty because we were talking about like maybe going back into lockdown. Like, I'm saying something pretty shitty. Like, the flu still kills more people. And I was like, that argument went out the window in like April. That went, <laughs> that went out the window like, a million people yeah. ago. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay. That person works here, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> that person is, is a Barstool Sports employee. Is it a female? It sure is. Yeah. <laughs> that, that way you did that, I was like, that is a female who works for Barstool. <laughs> Interesting. That does not take a detective? She was like, okay. Okay. Yeah, never mind. In her, to her credit, she didn't stand her ground. She's like, yeah, you're no, right. I was, you're right. I was you're right. Wrong. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. To her um, credit, she backed down like a pussy. <laughs> um, my number one pick, uh, Benjamin Franklin. I know he's not a president. <laughs> my, <laughs> my number one pick is Benjamin Franklin. My my number one president of all time is a non-president. That dude was fucking awesome. He was fat. He was gross. He somehow fucked bitches. He invented electricity. I know it doesn't make sense, but he invented it. He, he discovered he, electricity. He's the, he, he's, no, right? Did he, yeah, did he yeah. figure out how to, did he no, like figure yeah. out how to use no, it? No, that's, that? that's why I think it's funny. That's why I picked him. It's like people say he like invented electricity like he's a Roman god, right. but it comes from his fingertips. He just like, you know, got struck by lightning. Also, like, that <laughs> you know? whole story's fucking bullshit. Yeah. The key and he the... He was flying yeah. a kite with a key no, attached? No, what no, kind of totally. lunatic does that? Totally. I'm pretty sure that's definitively fake. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, but you think about all these things, like, all of these stories. I was watching something the other day about the midnight ride of Paul Revere. Mm -hmm. The dude who wrote the poem, like, it was some other dude named, like, Zach Smith. And he was like, yeah, Revere rhymes with a bunch of shit. So I said it was Paul Revere. Paul Revere didn't really fucking do the British he was, he was, like, a part of it, but he was not the dude. It was just like Revere rhymes with uh, whatever, like the, come along children, let me, whatever, however like the main poem goes. It, like there's something that right off the top that rhymes with Revere, like clear or something like that. He was like, yeah, I need to rhyme. So, really? So you just think about like these, all these stories Dude, and all these history Zach books. Zach Smith like, got fucking boned. Yeah, he got man. the raw deal. I don't Dude. know why I said Zach Smith. It's like Zach and Smith, <laughs> like whatever. Uh, but yeah, so like you think about those things where it's like, I don't know, something probably happened with a kite one day and something electricity and all of a sudden it turns into this fucking thing, you know, where he's like Doc Brown with the flux capacitor. It's Dude, like, that's like, I mean, you just like, you just had the idea that lightning yeah, carried electricity and you're like, I got to make up a story. Basically. How I basically. It's, it's basically like you knew the answer. 
and like on a test, and they made you show your work, and you're like, right. I don't like know. Like reverse uh, engineered some shit. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, or yeah, as far as we know. Flying a kite on a, in a rainstorm. Uh, ben Franklin could have been shit faced with a couple of French whores yeah. and was outside, like, let me show you girls what's up. Like, we're going to fly this fucking kite. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, holy shit. This party got a little out of hand. We got struck by lightning. Ben, man. ben Franklin is just Ron Jeremy with better PR. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> like, yeah, he's a genius. He's fucking brilliant. He does a. No, he's a fucking cannonball with a mullet and have fucking apparent. A piece, apparently. That's it. And, and, which you know, eventually rotted off of his fucking sex addicted body. It rotted off him. I'm mean, see, make it up, <laughs> make up history, man. And I, I will have to say, even though he's my number one pick, I mean, goddamn daylight savings. Once you have a kid, is just a fucking fiasco. Either direction, you're either bedtime is either a fucking nightmare. Did he invent daylight savings? Yeah. Oh, what and an and then uh, or like you know, somebody, some some asshole. Like I said yesterday or two days ago, whenever it was, I said like fuck daylight savings, and someone was like, why? Because it means like another hour with your kids, and I was like. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like I have, you know, the exact amount of time from wake up to from from wake up out of bed to get back in bed. And anything that extends that or fucks with it in any way, it's chaos. <laughs> so yeah. So I'm not in on that. I might move to Arizona one day and just live uh, that, that's that's live one of the free. most under discussed bizarre things in Arizona the world. just saying fuck. Arizona's it. just like nah. I love it. We we do not partake. Them. Like imagine being in one of the, like if you live like right on the border. And you have to work in a different state. Yeah, I mean, you could you could I have like a two hour swing. Never get used to that. Yeah, never. I would, I would be. Like, I don't know. There's a, there's a scene in Thirty Rock when there, Tracy Jordan is always late for work. So they always try and do things to Set make the him think time's yeah. And they're all like saying like, "Well, I put his clock back." And like, "Well, I called him and told him to shoot was at this time." And someone else like, "Well, I did this." Yeah. And he comes downstairs. He just goes, "What damn time is it?" <laughs> I just brought my kid to his music recital at what turned out to be midnight yesterday. <laughs> it's like, like that's Arizona. That's just Arizona, making that's shit up. People, everyone in Could Arizona, imagine, is like, what like, the fucking what, time is it? Like, if they just didn't participate in other things, it was just like, no, no, no. Uh, February is thirty-one days. Yeah, we don't yeah. like this bullshit. It makes no sense that there's a month with twenty-eight days. We're not gonna do it. It's February thirty-first here in Arizona. Fuck March second. That would be fucking <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> that I, I do. Mean, I don't. I I, I think that they're not doing the um, daylight savings is cowardly. But I think if you go all the way in, be like, no, we just we do everything. Like, like why? Why are months different? Why stop? Days? I know. Yo, every month is just thirty days. Have you ever seen the, 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 the proposed? Uh, I think it's ten months at thirty days each. There's like a calendar that, and and the way it works out is every single day of the week, like the the. Every number of the month is always the same day. So like your schedule would just be so easy. You'd be yeah. like every the Thursday is always the 15th. It's always like it's always like set. So you just know all the time. Rather than this dumb shit we got emperors making up months for their own Why fucking, like, why do we have 365 days? I don't I mean is I there, I, I do there, I do know that emperors just like you know August was for like Augustus Caesar or whatever, right? He was how just long like, it takes to go around the sun once. But it's so but it's but, like, but it but it right, No, out. but but that's true, but like the calendar used to not be as many months, right? So it used to not be based on 365, right? Yeah, I think Caesar and they Augusta added July added, is for Julius Caesar and and you know like like August for August Augusta. for Augustus or whatever Augustus October Augustine. for Octavius. Or yeah, something. so it's like we used to have like 6 months. These motherfuckers just adding that's a power move. <laughs> if I was president, I'd be like I'm I'm giving myself a month. <laughs> <laughs> All right, second pick. All right, number 2 um boy this is getting hard. <laughs> <laughs> We've literally named one. One president. <laughs> um, I am going to go. Right now, between our two picks, we have about 30 days of presidential being a president. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> We have exactly 30 days. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go. I'll go FDR. Because uh, FDR pick. was the one who gave himself another term, right? Yes. That's a power move. That was going to be my pick, and, and that was going to be my reason. Really? And, 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 like, people talk about it with Trump. Like, he's never going to leave. He's going to, like, declare himself king. And I, I think it was because it was, like, during World War II, and they are like, we can't be doing, like, elections in the middle of this. But the fact that he just gave himself, like, four Why terms, couldn't you do elections in the middle of World War II? I, I, I actually don't know that. Like, the I, war wasn't happening here. Yeah, I think they were just basically, like, we don't need, like, a, sh a change in administration in the middle of this. Would be my guess. I don't know. But well, it, it well, is just crazy. tell you what. We've handled it pretty well for the last 20 years. <laughs> Every other time. <laughs> <laughs> There's been a whole bunch of fucking We've wars. We've been at we war for rolling. 20 years. We're we just, just like, yeah. roll it over. Who's next? <laughs> rolling it over. As just it, so you know, there's a lot of shit going on in the Middle East. Wasn't even my call. Right. Uh, but but as if like as if the next cat would have come in and been like, 
pff, we're pulling out. Yeah. We're, le- we're letting Hitler do his yeah, thing. Yeah, we're yeah. not. I don't agree with this war. <laughs> Fuck Look, off. Look, I don't have to do yeah. the Nazis are. They made a couple good points. But so and, we'll, and, and also didn't um, what's his face drop the bomb? So FDR wasn't even president throughout the whole thing. So they did oh, eventually. Really? Yeah. Wasn't didn't uh, Truman drop the bomb? Really? Yeah. Yeah, so he must have caught. Imagine that you come in relatively, no, definitively at the tail end of this thing, and you're like, "Fucking drop the bomb and wrap this up." I don't want to be a president during this World War shit. Wrap it up, <laughs> wrap that shit up, B. I got presidential shit to do. Fuck off. All right, so um, I'm gonna go with uh, JFK. Ah, fuck. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, especially I figured you were gonna go with him because like my presidents who don't get assassinated. <laughs> 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 fucking like next time don't get your head blown off was isn't there something that he like he like wanted the top down wasn't he like yeah i want to show the people um no i think it was just it was supposed to rain that day and it just didn't and it did mm. and had it rained they would have had the mm. like bulletproof bubble up that's another crazy I think, one i mean everything here is complete speculation completely made like, up. like so i heard a homeless guy muttering it once yeah. like yeah okay <laughs> my favorite mm. thing in the world uh and uh, maybe i'm handing you a pick here but uh it's not my favorite thing in the world. It's a crazy thing to say. It's just <laughs> factoids that, you know. My favorite little tidbit in history is all the the Lincoln and Kennedy things. You know, those like, mm-hmm. so um, Lee Harvey Oswald shot him from a warehouse and then he ran and hid in a theater. Right. And John Wilkes Booth shot him in a theater and ran to a warehouse. And Kennedy's assistant was named Lincoln. Lincoln's assistant was named Kennedy. And that, 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 that all those things, those aren't true either. Oh, really? The same show that I learned about Paul Revere? Like, one of them is true. I think the warehouse thing might be true. The rest, there's, like, nobody named Kennedy, nobody named Lincoln. They were supposed to be, like, born on the same day or something. Like, that's not true. Like, all, it was, it, it was the guy those... who shot uh, Kennedy was a three-namer, too, right? Yeah, but see, I think that is, like... Who was it who shot Kennedy? Uh, Kennedy was Lee Harvey. Well, supposed to be Lee Harvey Oswald, and then, if you believe it. And then John Wilkes Booth John shot. Wilkes, okay. But I also think that um, everybody, like... Has three, you know, like I, I, I even think, if you go buy it, like yeah, you're a psycho. Yeah, okay, that. So that's what I always wondered. I thought though that maybe they do that when you commit a crime to specify, like there's two, there's multiple Kevin Clancy's. So if I'm the one who killed you, let, let's say it's Kevin Francis Clancy, do they say that so that to like differentiate, or is it that those guys all go by three? No, names? because there are plenty because of people who they just have the two just, names just in the news. Because you're right. right, if you yeah. do a three, if you're a three namer, you are crazy. Agreed. John Henry Feinberg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the shoe fits. <laughs> All right, you're up. Uh, three. Um, yeah, I guess I'll rip Lincoln. I mean, he's. he's, he's I just he's, said I like my presidents who don't get assassinated, but mm-hmm. um, I kind of. By the way, I like my presidents who do. Yeah, I think that's like. Pow, yeah, it's like my rock star boss move. Die yeah, early. yeah. Die young, leave a good looking corpse. Right. You know? Die young, leaving the Did, fucking was, history books with a chapter about you. Was Lincoln wearing his hat at the play? That's a great question. I bet not. I feel like you, you know, you get inside, you take your hat off. Yeah, I, I, you can't wear a top hat at the theater, well, especially when you're seven feet tall. Yeah. So like, if, if that guy was, had Marfan syndrome, if one of my was, buddies had Marfan syndrome. What's that? It's like your everything's elongated. Like that's why he looked like he looked. Really? Long neck, long fingers. No, maybe made up. I don't know. <laughs> no, I, I believe it to be true, but maybe. Like so, how about this? For the rest of this, we can't ask really. Okay. <laughs> like, yeah. I am trying to speak the truth, but I don't know if it is. But I'm pretty sure Google. This All right. Me. So Lincoln Abraham was Lincoln wearing Marfan his hat, syndrome. yeah. And in which case, I agree with John Wilkes Booth. Yeah. Like if you're put your fucking hat down, dude. dude. I can't fucking see, man. You're fucking a hundred feet tall, and you're wearing a four foot hat. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I'm trying to watch a goddamn see, play, bro. I, I do again. For it's a great pick for you. Like a president who has a fashion statement. Like you, you see top hat, like it's Abe, you know, yeah. and like the, mu- he had the chops too, right? Yeah, 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 and you know, eight feet tall in a time where everyone was like four feet tall. Yeah, you know, I'm so surprised that they weren't that like, dude, you know, what, he's king. Elected. Yeah, like, like it's this guy is clearly something better than us. So we, yeah. he's just well, like, it's because he was weird looking. Imagine, tall, imagine if someone was running for president now and they were nine feet tall. Right, you'd be like, we have to elect him. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. okay, he's an alien. Yeah, I guess let's not piss him off. I love all the like the doesn't he? You know, he gets so much credit for the emancipation, but like, wasn't he kind of like? I mean, I guess we'll like set him free. Like, he he, like, oh, he was like, right? I don't give a shit. Right. He's, he's like, like, I, he's like, we, like I just wanna... he's like, we just need to be a union. Yeah. Man. You guys gotta decide. Are we right. doing and you lost the war? So like, slaves? That's it. Or are we doing no slaves? We'll fight it out amongst yourselves. Yeah. You figure it out with 160 thousand dead bodies. Right. Like whatever. <laughs> How about um John Wilkes Booth? Just didn't he like just pop his hand and pow? Like he just like like point blank that shit with like a musket. You yeah. Know? Imagine being like, like point blank to the president. Yeah. Like that's crazy, man. Like they. I wonder if that was the moment they were like, 
gotta protect this guy. I mean, they they used to give speeches on literal stumps. So they're called stump speeches. They're like you just like okay, we Except just chop down a tree. Abe, why don't you just stand up on this? Abe, Abe probably didn't even need it. He's yeah. already talk. Wasn't uh, wasn't Washington? Fuck. Well, it's my pick. Yeah, Washington. Okay. Wasn't he like way bigger than the average people? Yes, he, definitively. Yeah, 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 he was. I'm I pretty sure that. he really was. That's why he loved was cutting down king trees and not telling lies. Yeah, uh, actually, him and Lincoln both chopped on cherry trees. That's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. and I think they both didn't tell they both a lie. Fucking hate. Yeah, except the fact that they lied about chopping Everything. on cherry trees. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a weird thing. Like, son, did you chop down that cherry tree? It's like, oh, I mean, why are we chopping down trees? Yeah, what the fuck's yeah. going on? How about I just pick the cherries off it and we'll let it grow more? Yeah, we don't need to chop the whole goddamn thing down. <laughs> like, why don't you do something like? Like when you're running around as a kid, like that's how you cause mischief. You chop down trees. I'm just like fuck girls and do weird, like normal shit. <laughs> Steal like my liquor. My dog had wooden teeth. That's why I didn't those fuck girls. fucking wooden teeth, man. Those are some. That's that's. Yeah, I like my presidents with wooden teeth. He's a fucking G. George Washington was that dude. Winning the American Revolution is some boss shit. That's really not talked about enough. I mean, that's a upset, dude. That's <laughs> yeah, a I mean, big upset. An empire versus militia. Yeah, which is funny also though. why did they come here to fight us? They should have just not. Well, like I guess you guys they, build boats. Well, like, we probably just weren't uh, like giving them their like their taxes or whatever, right? Probably exactly. Probably just like, we'll right. keep the money. And they're like, well, yeah. we gotta go get it. And they're like, come get some. We're gonna fuck you. We're gonna fight you from the trees. It also is very hilarious that like the whole reason for the American Revolution we just do now in D.C. and Puerto Rico and stuff like that. What do you mean? Like it was taxation without that, representation. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And and like like D.C. Yeah, you don't get senators. Yeah. Puerto Rico, you don't. You get know what I shit. love? The like, Virgin Islands, you don't get shit. Just pay us our money. What was a great? Uh, I love. And we'll, the, I guess we'll maybe help you out if hurricanes come, but probably not. We'll just come and throw toilet paper at you. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't laugh. That's so true. <laughs> we'll drop a box with some, some like you know, a couple bottles of water. Uh, remember that week during like the protests that everybody was using the the Boston Tea Party meme. And they were like, no. like everyone was like, you know, uh, what would like our founding fathers think of like violence like this, you know? And, and then people, were, everyone thought they were so clever, being like, like comparing the American Revolution to the the Black Lives Matter protests. I just remember that that period of time where like everybody was tweeting out pictures of the Boston Tea Party, and I was like, this is madness. This is fucking <laughs> madness. But yeah, George Washington, like running point on the American Revolution, we beat this shit out of fucking Britain. Also, kind of crazy that Britain was like the most powerful country in the world. Itty bitty. They you know? well, they but they and owned that, everything. That, and they had that so navy. it wasn't itty bitty. It yeah. Was, well, had, right, right, right. They you know they colonized and everything, but and they had all the guns. It is. Yeah, they had the all guns, the fucking guns all the boats, the all the guns. I mean, shout out to the French though. Lafayette, right? <laughs> all these things I learned from Hamilton. That's it. You're up. Uh, we're getting. To, we're in the end game here. No, well, <laughs> here's. I was gonna do a little ass kicking real quick. I'll go with Dave Portnoy. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's clever, but I also can't believe you stooped so low. Yeah. Drafting oh, Dave Portnoy. I didn't even stoop low. I dug a hole. Yeah. I, I'm not even yeah. like. Yeah. Ugh. Stoop, Ugh. I'm in the ground. Now right you have now. to. Okay, now wax poetic about him. Well, I mean, Dave, I, I couldn't thank him enough. He gave me a job, gave me a life. Without him, I'd be. Uh, okay. I forget what he says right, I'd do. That's enough. What would I be doing? I forget. Uh, ha Hank's a museum ticket taker. You were doing insurance? Your dad? I guess maybe it's just not it. that bad. I don't think he ever mentions you because it's really not that bad. Yeah. Like, you would fucking work for your family-owned insurance empire. <laughs> like you probably should have done that. Probably would have been better for you. <laughs> okay, I'm up. Um, um, I was gonna go. I think I'm gonna. Okay, I'm gonna uh, a little loophole here. We're not talking about like the person. We're talking about the president, if you will. Okay. Like the time. I mean, like the time he was president. Okay. Bill Clinton. Slick Willie. I mean, that's a good answer. Yeah, yeah. But, but I just don't want to be known as drafting a guy who like rapes young women. Uh, because that's well, what he does I guess, now. I guess, I'm going to say that he wasn't during the White House. Uh, I mean, he was. That was consensual. <laughs> it was consensual. <laughs> I'm not drafting Epstein Clinton. I'm drafting Lewinsky Clinton. I like my presidents getting their dicks out consensually <laughs> and playing the saxophone and shit. Prior yeah. to all that Epstein shit, though, I really I do think he was a good pick because he's like, I think he was the first. No, Clinton, uh, Kennedy was cool, right? But like, I think in the modern era, I feel like like Clinton was like the cool guy. He was on our, uh, on it was either Arsenio Hall or whatever late night it was. Leno, that's really and the sax, saxophone right? and all yeah. that shit. It was like, oh, you can have a little bit of personality. You don't yeah, have to be like he, a total fucking stick. We had a good run. Yeah. From him, right? It went Clinton to George W, right? Yep. 
Clinton George W. Well, Obama. Clinton George W. has kind of looked back with some rose colored glasses. I feel like it was not so great under him. Oh like no, for sure. But he's just him. a definitively cool guy. Oh, cool, cool yeah. wise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Agreed, agreed. No, agreed. no, I'm just talking. I'm, I'm talking strictly the yeah. PR guys, right? The, the not, Q rating or whatever. Yeah, yeah, those yeah. Guys those, are cool. those, that three in a yeah. row is like those are three yeah. guys I'd fucking chill with. Definitely, no doubt. That's a great. Like, they can tell me all about all their war crimes. <laughs> <laughs> Would that be funny if you ever got them in a, in a, in a room and they're like, dude, they, have a beer and good ones? Yeah, wouldn't it be funny? Obama, what were those fucking drones like? Could you imagine? And I guess it's really not imagining because like of shit like that but like if we find out that like Obama was like a bad dude because like politics aside what he doesn't seem to be like a rapist or like a murderer like yeah maybe the drone thing and some crazy like you know war type of shit but if we just find out behind the scenes that he was like a womanizer and like a bad dude that would be wild I would be shocked 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 him him hitting that jumper the other day you saw that yeah he played it cool like you should when he was like that's just like what I do but you know on the inside he had to be like Yes. Yeah. Oh, fucking God. so happy that Dude. went in. So pumped because if he misses it, it's also like whatever. But that yeah. going in, he's like fucking going viral. Yes, <laughs> yes. My Netflix documentary is about to get so many. Ads. Right, right. Um. Okay. Is my fifth? Is this fifth or yeah. fourth? Fifth. fifth. Boy, oh boy. I mean, you could you could go with him. I could go with Obama. John, lib, 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 libberg. Fight a lib. I could go with um. Go with Chester B. Arthur. <laughs> Chester B. Arthur. Wow, man, facial hair. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> let's, 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 let me pop that up real quick. We might be going CB. <laughs> I love that you're like I don't know any presidents, but then you know the guy with the facial hair. <laughs> Boy. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Look at that, yeah, bad Larry. That, that's your choice. Or it might be Herbert Hoover. Herbert Hoover did some cool shit with the I, FBI. I, I'm a sucker for alliteration. Mm. Yeah, the FBI, that sounds cool too, but I just, he just got two H's in his name. How often do you see that? And like Herbert is like Herbie. Yo, what Herb. up, Herb? Also, it's it's the... Um, you know what's a great, a great... Like, it's hard enough for us to just list these presidents. Imagine if you had to do it by face. Like, if you pulled that, I would... Oh. I wouldn't know that, man. No, that is... Hang on. I, I, I didn't see it. And I don't know if I... I can't see it now either. Um, fuck. I mean... It's Herbert Hoover. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were just... Three thirty. You're early today. You are early today. Um, um, Herbert Hoover. I guess because he's the only president I know who's referenced in Home Alone. Um, when the old neighbor, she says, "I haven't had a phone since Herbert Hoover." Wow. Um, I, or I, haven't, I haven't done something. I'm, I'm gonna. See, I'm gonna Google that real quick too. Um, Herbert. Hoover Home Alone. Did you take like Ritalin as a kid? No. Did you ever have like ADHD stuff? Nothing. No. Surprising. <laughs> it's quite, dude, my phone, I never believed in this shit. I always thought it was overplayed. My phone's a fucking disaster since the new phone came out. Mm-hmm. Like everything is so incredibly mm-hmm. slow. Yep. Mine today just wouldn't play podcasts. Just, really? Just I press play, just nothing happened. What Bullshit. is going on here? Herbert Hoover. Can you Google Herbert Hoover Home Alone? Are you sure there's a Herbert Hoover reference I'm in like Home Alone? The old neighbor sure. says something like, I haven't been on the phone Some, since Herbert something Hoover. Something since, her, since Herbert Hoover. I mean, it's not, might not be the phone. I had the chicken pox when Herbert Hoover he was in the White House. Doesn't he like sneak out of the house and get to uh, Home Alone 3? This fucking asshole's referencing Home Alone, oh, 3, Home Alone 3 on my goddamn show. What, I gotta say? be honest, that is the that's the worst look for for you ever. You referenced Home Alone. I don't 3 honestly on don't even know I've seen this movie. <laughs> I had the chicken yes. pox when Herbert Hoover was in the White House. No, no, no. House. Yeah, listen. <laughs> you Sure, you were correct about Home Alone 3. I, I honestly, if you'd asked me before if I had ever seen Home Alone 3, I would have said For no. Instance, yeah. I can't believe you pulled a Home Alone 3 reference out of your asshole. I, I, think, I think I was just a kid and I was like, I know a president. I know a president. Yeah. Herbert Hoover was a president. And uh, I was... No, the, Home Alone 1, 2. No, oh, Herbert yeah, Herbert baby! Stay here on this floor. No, Herbert Hoover oh, wants no, to stay here on this floor. That's Home Alone 2. No, Herbert yeah, Hoover wants to stay here on this floor. Okay. That's different. Yeah, but okay, I guess you're well, right. I think I, I mean I think that the reference I was referring to was the third. I said the old name. I said yeah, Bob I mean, Schneider. I said definitely. the old late name. You were definitively referencing Home Alone 3, which yeah. I think is the maybe the first time ever that someone has used that as like a <laughs> pop culture reference. Like, yo, yeah, yeah, you know that scene from Home Alone 3? Definitively no. Everyone says no to that. I've never seen that. No, I don't know what you're talking about. All um, right, so is that your pick, Herbert? Um, who's the one who got stuck in a tub? Ah, that was gonna maybe uh, be my pick. Taft. Taft, William Taft. He was so fucking fat. Yeah, it gotta be Billy. Yeah, Billy yeah. Taft. Billy, BT? It is William Taft, right? Yeah. Yeah, so he was like 400 pounds. 
Imagine if like Frank the Tank or Coach Doug's was our president. Because <laughs> that's what it was. I remember that was you know a what? big thing when Christie was running. Yeah, or can't, com- can't have a fat president, like, right? Like thinking about running. It was yeah. like, in this day and age, like, We've had a black president. Yeah, you know, we uh, all these ways. Time to have a different fat people. one. Like, could we? I think it said like we will have a female president, a gay president, and everything before we have a, a fat, fat one. Yeah. I don't well, think so. but that's also definitely wrong because Donald Trump's president. Yeah, but he's he he is big, but like he, like not round fat. Like Chris, he's Christine, round fat. I don't. He's because he's just big too. He's, though he's you need, tall, like, a but short, he's a fat, fat man. guy. Yeah, he's not round, bro. He's fat. I, I'm going to disagree with you on this oh, one. Oh, you're going to disagree, and you're going to be wrong. I, I I think he hides it. Like, Chris Christie has that he fat He wears fupa. it pretty well, but yeah. he's fat. Right, okay, that's fine. But I'm saying he does not appear to be fat. I mean, there are definitely pictures of him where he looks like a fat person. Yeah, they also do, like, touch up every single one of his pictures. Yeah. But you know what I mean? Like, like, yeah, I mean, like Chris not, Christie is, is, if you're going to compare the two, like, Chris not, Christie not is a, a round, Humpty Dumpty fatso, you know? But, like, this is a guy, like, that guy's got to go to a yeah, threat. Like, that's yeah. a fat man. Yeah, that's, that's all. I and mean, that's also just an old man, you yeah. know? Uh, but that, I think, I think uh, Taft was, I think the whole thing with him was, like, um, he was one of the last and only, because, like, nobody knew what the president looked like. Like, when you went to vote, it was, like, you didn't know, because it wasn't TV, and there wasn't, like, all this shit, so it was kind of, like, you've maybe you seen just a picture really just here. taking a shot I, in the dark. You might have read a paper once. Kinda, yeah. And I mean, that's fucking FDR <laughs> hid that he couldn't walk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you right. know, people, nobody even knew that. Imagine that if it was like, you know, plot twist, your president's a cripple. <laughs> Shit. Uh, that was going to be my pick. So um, I feel like, you know, who's had a great, like, recent glow up looking back on it? Reagan. Those Reagan 84 shirts everybody started to wear. That became like well, a that's like, college. Well, that's like Southern frat stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like that, that became that's just, a. That's just. People who, but I also think girls want to fuck him. I think, I think girls, yeah, I think girls and said that Reagan's hot. Like, my dad says he's awesome, yeah, so I'm gonna wear a T-shirt. Definitely, like, definitely. I want, I want to so daddy. Had a big up. Um, I mean, he, he had the least. I, I, there's like one viral tweet of him on the plane, and it's like, this is the least swag of any drug dealer I've ever seen. Yeah, and it's him in like sweatpants on Air Force right, One. Right, right. <laughs> that kind of shit where it, you know, like the Reaganomics became like a thing that rappers are talking about. Uh, I know my answer. Uh, Teddy Roosevelt, Rough Rider. What is a Rough Rider? I don't know. Okay. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was, uh, it was like uh, We don't know asses. anything. I mean, I knew the name. I knew yeah. that it was a thing. <laughs> Rough Riders, I think, were, it was like a group of like, of, like political, uh, it was like I, him and his gang, I right? I think they were like kind of policemen that yeah. rode on horseback. Horses, and, like, right. I think he was like a Rough Rider. It wasn't anything to do when he was president, right? He was a rough no, rider. He and then was a rough rider. Yeah. And then, I think he so was like he I think was he was like a, a, a like a vigilante? No, he, no. I think no, he, was he was it was sanctioned, but yeah. he was like I think he was kind of like a like a ranger, like a like a yeah. Texas Ranger kind of, like a park ranger on a horse, like he will fuck you up. And I mean, he's got the It sounds it sounds to me like he's yeah, U.S. voluntary caval- cavalry. Mm, that sounds a little vigilante. Yeah, little that sounds voluntary. Very sounds, voluntary. Like sounds like you're gonna hop on your horse with a gun. It and sounds like he's fucking up. Batman without money. Yeah, I'm riding horses and shit. And I mean, rough riders is just like that's a fucking that's a term. Rough riders is a cool term. Yeah. Shout out Cedar Rapids, their hockey teams, the Rough Riders. Rough riders. Uh, yeah. So that's my my rough rider riding out my top five. I think that draft went very well. I think that went well as well. Great. Top five, <laughs> uh, because you know, as we, as you can tell, we are political aficionados. Voicemails, let do it. Um, voicemails today are brought to you by Guideline. Four hundred one ks are. It sends a great message to your employees. Says that you have their back and that you care about them. Uh, and so, if you run a small business, you you have to. Almost in this, in this day and age, provide a four hundred one k. Do you contribute to your four hundred one k? Yeah. Um, I don't. I gotta start doing that. Uh, I S- sure do. Stephanie uh, was like, I was just talking to her about my equity and like trying to get some money. I need some cash right now, and she was like, We can, you know, potentially, um, you know, like if you really are in a jam, we can like use some of your four hundred one k. And I was like, I don't think I've been doing that because I haven't had any money. And she was like, Yeah, I checked on that. It's it's empty. It's like, yeah, yeah, it's empty. <laughs> How can you use something for your 401k? You have to pay, like, crazy penalties? I think so, yeah, yeah. That's, I think, if you're in, like, a jam, jam. That's what your boy did, right? Didn't he pull on his 401k? Yeah, until yeah. so he got fired. So <laughs> his accountant fired him. <laughs> uh, so if you're a small business and you got and you want to offer your employees a 401k, uh, use Guideline. They'll take it off your hands. You can cross it off your list, and you can start saving with ease and having your employees back. Because you, when you're choosing the right empl- uh, retirement plan for your employees, it can be complicated. It can be confusing. 
uh, and that's where guideline comes in to make it simple and seamless. And I know you might think like, oh, my business is too small. I can't offer a 401k. Think again, because 401ks are like a differentiator between like a good and successful business and and a not so good one. Because if you know, think about the talent involved. If you're like wh- whatever Barstool it is, sports started doing well when we added a 401k. I mean that that really is like. If you're attracting talent and someone's like, well, I could work here that has it and here that doesn't have it, they're going to go to the place where they can match money and basically get some free cash for retirement down the road. So uh, think about it. There's no such thing as too small of a business. And uh, when you use a company like Guideline, they'll take all of it off your hands and it can give you an edge over the rest of the competitors and the people in your industry. Uh, Go to guideline.com slash KFC. And for right now, for a limited time, you can get a $100 gift card when you start your 401k plan with Guideline. That's guideline.com slash KFC to start a 401k for your business. They'll do compliance testing, record keeping, investment management. They'll handle the ad- admin. It takes 10 minutes to set up, and they will find a design for a 401k plan that fits your needs and will help uh, all of your employees manage their own accounts. That's guideline.com slash KFC. Tell them KFC Radio sent you. What we got, Nick? KFC, Fights in the Boys, what up? All right, I don't know if this is an am I the asshole or what. I just need you guys' opinion. So before I start, I am 25, girlfriend is 24, and we do not live together. So she's bringing it up to me probably 10 plus times how we need to get matching Christmas pajamas, onesies, whatever the hell. So last night, she sends me a screenshot of something she found on Amazon. It's this male model, and I think she they call it a sleep shirt, so you slip it over your head, but it's longer, so it ends between your knees and your ankle. So she says it to me, oh, my God, babe, did we get these? My response was, um, yeah, you know what, let's, let's just get it. I know we're, we're going to move in together soon. And I was like, sure, if you want to get it, get it, because I know as soon as we move in together, that's going to be one of your first purchases. It's going to happen eventually, so rip the bandaid off, let's get it. Her response was all capital letters, laughing emojis. Oh, my God. I cannot believe you would wear a dress. <laughs> I'm never going to let you live this down. I'm going to put this on social media. And my response was, like, you don't really get it. It's me wearing it for one day ends the conversation from ever happening again. It's worth it, in my opinion. It's worth it to end the thing. And I was trying to explain. If a girl says no, that's it. The conversation ends. But if a guy says no, it'll never end. Because she's always going to bring it up every year and every month, whatever. So what? Am I an asshole? I don't, what would you guys do in this situation? Let me know. I mean, that's that's a dirty move by a girl to be like... I mean, we're talking about night shirts here, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I wear the fuck out of a night shirt. I was going to say, there, there's a lot to unpack here. First of all, let's talk about the issue at hand. Night shirts are fire. 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 They're comfortable. I, I, they're awesome. Dude, for Christmas last year, I got my buddy, who I had Secret Santa... A night, a night shirt. shirt. I mean, that, like, that to me. He wears it all the time. That's that. Basically, like, every time he wears it, he takes a picture sent to me, which is basically every night. Barstool indoors type shit to the max. Like, I, I, maybe, you know what? We're going to make them. Well, well, I basically already kind of do. If you buy the, if you buy the Barstool indoors long sleeve t shirt, it kind of like goes down low. But we'll, we're going to make this shit like down <laughs> to your fucking legs, down to your knees. Uh, so that's like point one. Like, awesome jammies are fire. Okay. Uh, point two. Your girl, this is like, this is like violating the terms of an of of a relationship. <laughs> to be like, to like, to be the girl and to request something like stereotypically girly, just to set your boyfriend up. Right. That's fucked up. Yeah. You can't do that. <laughs> you know, it's like, hey, babe, do you want to like be like do a couple's costume? It's like, I guess so. Ah, you fucking loser! <laughs> you fucking pussy! It's like, whoa! I thought I was gonna get brownie <laughs> points here. What the fuck? Well, yeah, wasn't my idea. Yeah, I just you agreed just, to do what you wanted. Right. Do, like, is- if anything, this should just point out how like afraid of you I am, and <laughs> yeah. how much like I don't actually have a say in this world. And usually, I get talked into things I don't want to do by you and other women. Uh, so that's the other issue. And then the third issue is kind of like, I guess, like doing doing the the. The matching PJs, doing the couple's costume, doing the like, I, I don't mind. Uh, I don't. I don't really care about the matching PJs thing because I like the P. Like I don't need the. the I like. I like the sleep shirt. I don't need it to match, and we don't need to post it on social media and all that. I, if if your girl has to do that, my mom still does that. Leaves them at the football with, with band. your whole family. Like we get. Like, that's it's not, that not can matching. Do, they're just new. Everyone gets like new pajamas. Yeah, and I've, I've, I haven't worn them since I was like so. My, my mom does. We that. don't have to wear them. It's just she puts them at the base of the bed. My mom does that, but it's all different PJs, mm-hmm. so we don't look like. I think when you, uh, all right, here's here's the levels of. I think it's cornier, 
if you are like the guy and girl doing it and you and your girl like posted on social media, I think when it's a whole family, you look like some white people shit. Yeah, yeah. You look like some like Kennedys or some like but like not in a good way. They look like some white cult shit. You know what I mean? What was uh, the the picture of the 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 black kid? It was a black guy at like his white girl's family mm-hmm. Christmas. Like some get out shit. And it was I'm gonna see if I can find the picture. I remember like it going viral on Twitter. Everyone's like, we was, gotta save this. Was man. he wearing it too? Like he was I forget. The, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean that's 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 get out right there where it's like we're all in like striped red and green and it's like you know i'm sure again if like if i were to do that right now with my little kids it's one thing once everyone's like an adult i feel like it kind of starts to get weird with the matching but you have to understand like girls do want to do these things girls are always coming up with shit that guys don't really want to do that we just do because we feel like we have to do it whether it's the going to see the tree or going to do the apple picking and i know some people like those things but a lot of guys don't and they're just like okay fine because i'm a huge proponent I don't know. I go back and forth. If, if my girl's like obsessed with Christmas uh, yeah. and like that was her thing and she found it fun, I'd, I'd love to do it. Like when you said, when you reference the apple picking, like I can have fun no matter if, as long as you're yeah. having fun. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll buy into it. I'm, right. I'm like a puppy. Like you can trick me easy. Like, yeah. Like, hey, we're going out. We're going out. I'm like, fuck yeah. Cider let's donuts. Go, let's yeah. go. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. And like, I'll be jacked up for it. Right. But if, it, if you're just like, if it's something you like, really don't want to do, my mom used to do this, so I do it now. What, what do you do if it's something that you really don't want to do? Because I used to be a big proponent of, like, pick your battles and, like, happy wife, happy life. And, like, look where that got me. It's like if you just give in on every single thing that you don't like. I've never had something I just really didn't want to do, mm-hmm. like, ever in history. Like, there are times that I'd, I'd rather not do something, I guess. But I'm a Well, little, like, you've also been single for a really long time where, like, you would just have done whatever you wanted to do. Like, yeah. You know, this is the only last couple of years where you've been into it and and now. But, like, I, I, yeah, like, I mean, like, like, lifelong. Like, it's like, I don't want to do it but if you like once i do it i have fun yeah i'm, 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 I'm pretty I'm, good at I'm, having I'll, fun. I'll make the best of any situation yeah what's fu- what's fucked is like this extra element of like if you you know your girl wants to post it on social media or something where it's like all right i don't mind doing this like fun christmasy thing but if it's something that like i look a little goofy during or it's like a little bit embarrassing and then you're gonna fucking take a video of it and take a picture of it and post it up there and then now it's like a thing that's that's a little bit of a different story so I would say, oh, I would say, I mean, in this case, like, you, I, I mean, on this case, like, head on a swivel, it sounds like your girl's out to, like, prank you or some shit. Um, but in most, I just start in to, most like, cases. I'm like, all right, you want to open that door? Because guess what? Guess who's better at pranking? Yeah. It's right, me. Right. I'm going to start to fuck with you yeah. now and, like, you know, trick you into shit and make fun of you about, you know, certain customs or whatever. Yeah. Uh, anywho, so whatever. Bottom, like, wrap it up. I like jammies. Uh Pick your battles, but 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 stand your ground if you really don't if you really don't like it. And uh, anyway, have you noticed <laughs> that there's a lot of people flipping to Christmas right now? Yes, more so than usual. Yep. Yes. 100%. Okay. I mean, it was earlier. I mean, Carly Rae Jepsen put out a Christmas song in October. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. It was, bo- it was before Halloween. I, I saw a Carly lot. Rae I think, I think Christmas Coley song. put up a blog. I saw Captain Khan's talking about it, and then just in general, like my timeline was just peppered with like. It's uh, Pat was talking about it on breakfast. Like it's Christmas season. We're doing Mariah Carey. I think we're kind we're of doing... skipping Thanksgiving this year. Y- yeah. Wh- why? What's going on? I think uh, the pandemic. Is is it that people are just like fuck it? We need something good. Let's go to Christmas. I think I think that's part of it. I think like I'm considering I might not go home for Thanksgiving. Yeah. I think I think people just like yeah, we're skipping it's like an extra. Because like, I mean, I, there's I, nothing that important that comes with Thanksgiving. Like, it's a great day. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. I have a blast on Thanksgiving. I mm-hmm. really enjoy it. It's, it's one of my favorite holidays. It's not necessary. But it's like not super necessary. It's like JV Christmas. It's like, right. like pre pre-game it, it, it for is, Christmas. It's the warm up for Christmas yeah. for sure. Which is fine. But usually I'm a big fan of like like Black Friday is almost like that's when I start Christmas. If we are all going to just agree this year we need two months of Christmas season. Because I do. It does. Christmas is kind of depressing to me. Christmas Day where it's like it's over. You know? Yeah. It's yeah. the build up. The, the Christmas season is what's dope. Christmas Day is like it's over now. If you guys are all. If everyone just wants to agree it's been extra shitty. And I don't. At least in New York it got cold real quick. Mm-hmm. And you guys want to just do two months of Christmas. I'm down. But I need to know what's going on. Because I, I was like. I'm trying. To, I'm like sitting here thinking like. November 1st. We've been doing like Christmas songs and shit. That feels early. It, it uh, there, we're gonna. I think at some point in our lifetime, we are going to hit. I have two predictions for things that happen in my lifetime. One, we stop eating meat. I think. I think at some point, maybe not in our lifetime, but I think 
at some point in the not so distant future, it will be weird to be like you were a meat eater. People will be just more vegetarian than not. Yeah. Why? I don't know. I but I, it's just it's a trend I see happening. Huh. And typically those people just win out in the end. It's a war yeah, of attrition, and usually yeah. like, all right, fucking fine. It I'll. just seems hard to me to like get your protein and shit. But I guess if they make that easier and it becomes like a more doable thing, I, it's it, it, it's a bold prediction to say in our lifetime. But I I don't I think like I think there's still quite a bit across America that are like yeah not gonna give up to that yeah you know? but i i think there will be it will be more common to be like oh he eats meat mm -hmm. like that's mm -hmm. a weird thing mm -hmm. um and two i forget what it was gonna christmas. be oh chris is gonna be year round year round dude i mean when i was a kid we started it was fucking that it was when santa came on the macy's day parade that's when think when christmas started yeah and in in just let's say and that was thanksgiving right 20 years 15 20 years yeah we added, another we, we've month added a whole new month so it's just gonna keep going Again, gonna i mean month. i feel like We're everything is that way like i remember like Hocus Pocus started airing in like August. Like people want, they always want to like start that season earlier. But there's been other seasons that kind of, like I think the reason why people did it after Halloween was because that Halloween season is its own thing. Yeah. So you think people will stop posting Halloween decorations and they'll just stick with Christmas? I think it's going to be big Christmas. Yeah, big Christmas, like Christmas undertones at all times. Yeah. I mean, I could get down with that. Again, if you if, if everyone I, just I wants think... to agree, like I think it's a little silly. I think it's premature. But if I understand the logic of like. Fuck it, let's do it because we need it. But don't tell me that this is something that's like normal. This is not normal. No, this is special. It's a different. This is year. somebody like something's in the water right now. People are jumping on board with a trend, and I'm like, I mean, I've seen it in New York. You start to see like decorations pop up steadily throughout the fall. But watching all of social media, not all, but a lot of people, be like, bam, it's Christmas Carol time. I've been listening to Christmas music all day. Like if you're rocking out right now to like, like not Mariah. If you're if you're listening to like. A fucking little drummer boy <laughs> on the oh, day. Garbage oh. song. Garbage. Not not. Most great. Christmas songs are garbage songs. P yeah, probably. I don't. I don't listen to Christmas music. Like I don't. I think I, it's I, weird I, when people are just like listening to that. Like on, driving like, in, in a car. Headphones. I don't. Like, if, yeah. If we're at a Christmas party. Yeah. Sure. sure. But, but if, if, like, if you have control for your own personal music, you're putting on like Christmas carols. Yeah. I think that's fucking strange. And, but I think so. We, we've obviously added November is now a Christmas month. Mm -hmm. We've kind of dabbled a little bit in October. That's also. That's like adding, it's like adding anal to the bedroom. Like once that's on the table, you don't take it off. Yeah, that's like it's right. It becomes regular. Yeah, now. it's, it's like, like yeah. Now, sometimes now it goes in your ass. Full November is regular. Mm -hmm. Now a little October regular. Can't you, take it back. You don't take that back. Right. There, there, that's right. It's a line you can't walk back over. Right. So girls, be be careful with that <laughs> asshole. Once it's once it's fair game, it's fair game. Uh, next voicemail. So KFC fights, uh, dude. I fucked up. Um, the other day, we're getting ready to go to uh, my fiance's brother's baby's gender reveal or whatever, and uh, was waiting on her while she was showering, getting ready, bored as shit, so I thought it'd be funny if I took a picture of my dick and save it as her background on her uh, lock screen and everything. And your, your boy will always beat you fast out. Fast forward, we drive uh, over to the party. I totally forgot I did it. Oh, and her grandmother, aunt, and mom... Want to see what wedding dresses uh, she's been looking at. So they all sit down, and at this point, I, I glance over, and I see she's reaching for her phone. And Yeah, they, they open it up, and there's a picture of my rock-hard dick as their background. Um, family's not happy. Pretty sure her dad thought she's a virgin, and oh my God. she's definitely not. So, uh, yeah, I don't really know what to do. I mean, I'll tell you uh, what. Kind of fucked here. Have a good one, boys. First of all, first of all, you can still be a virgin while looking at hard dicks. That is true. You can play that card. I, first of all, we need to address that we're wearing matching shirts. Tip <laughs> <laughs> Did not realize. I that. forgot if about you are, that. If as you're well. watching this on YouTube or you see any of the video clips, we stopped in the middle of the podcast to go play Jenga, where Jeff D. Lowe created our team name and team uniforms, pubes, which is the word pubes spelled out in pubes. And so we are wearing matching shirts to say pubes. <laughs> the, the hard dick, maybe. Na Nardini that. asked me. She goes, "Oh, like, look at that shirt." Is that something we're selling? It's like, no, 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 dog, we're not selling. She, the fact that she had to ask that and was and was probably like, we probably are. Fuck. Yeah. Um. Anyway, I'll tell you what. I think this relationship's over. I don't think there's coming back from that. I, I, if, I, if, if, if your dad thinks that you're a virgin and you're boy, and you're and there's a hard dick on the back, of, I mean, I don't think there's any coming back from that. I think as it's here's here's what matters. Is that dick bigger than his? <laughs> If it's a little addict than him, he'll get over if, it. If you're, if that's a tough one. If 
If I ever saw my daughter's boyfriend's dick on his on her phone and he has a fucking hammer, that's never leaving my brain. Yeah. That's never leaving my brain. But but because because you've taken because now you know he's the man in the room, right? Right. And yeah. But, but if he's got a little dick, you'd be like, you should marry this guy. Right. I'll right. fucking work him over, dude. That is like, that is honestly tough. Hey, Steve, tough. go get me a fucking coke. That, <laughs> that is tough. If you're like, yo, he pushes a little back, like, shut up, little dick. Go get me a fucking coke. <laughs> yeah. If you're trying to lay down the law, and you because you know, if push ever really came to shove and things somehow went super primal, and you guys laid it on the table. You lose. You lose, right? I mean, that's... If, if, I, was a, there, if I was a father... You know, there's something biological yeah. about that. We're like, this is my cave. This is my tribe. And now it's not anymore. Because no. you got a fucking body armor on you. <laughs> I mean, that's... You're so right. Yeah, yeah. If it's if it's a little dick than him, he'll get over it. Now, he'll okay, like, all right. Flip side, is there any worry that, like... that? Also, why did you have to say it was yours? It seems like it was... He didn't say a nude. He said a hard dick pic. Yeah, that's true. You're like, it was a fucking prank Samantha pulled on Also, me. my thing she is She just like, got on the internet. I mean, I guess if, if you're like, hey, let me see... Let me see these these uh, wedding pictures. I guess if we're like looking at it together and I swipe, but wouldn't it... Isn't it kind of like a... Let me show you... The, oh, yeah, yeah me, right. 100%. You know? um, Have you so, ever like opened like your phone where you had like something bad on it? I did yeah. it once. I was just... I had, I had just left the gym. Uh, this is when I went to Equinox and I lived by my old apartment. And same Equinox as Nina Agdahl, whatever. And uh, I was like lightheaded after I, I did like a course, like a class. Mm -hmm. And it was like fucking ropes and rows or some shit like that. And I was like, I was not in shape. And I did a class that was difficult. For shape, yeah. And I, I walked outside and was just like crazy, like lightheaded and hot. And I just sat down on like a, it was like a, I think it was the steps leading into Equinox. Okay. And I just sat down, and I was like, I was going to kill some time. And I opened Safari, and I was on browsers. Pornhub. Yeah. It was browsers, not yeah. Pornhub. It was back when I had a browsers. A oh, I was going to say, that's that's when you have a password. Yeah. You, you yeah, don't yeah. go to browsers. No, 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 right? no, okay. no. I had a password at the time. And Crazy. some dude just walked by and started laughing out loud. <laughs> and you're sitting on the steps of the gym like, oh, <laughs> shit. Look at this. I, mean, I did that just the other day. I was either at work or, I mean, it's definitely happened at home where, you know, I'm like in single dad mode, and then I go pick up the kids, and then I'm like, yeah, let me <laughs> yeah. swipe, 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 yeah. swipe, 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 swipe. Yeah, you just pop it back in your pocket. Don't ever just show someone your phone willy-nilly. It's oh, like fucking crazy. With, with, when it comes to your phone, you are the secret service, and that's the president. And you Protect fucking, that at all costs. You, you go in, you fucking, you check out the scene you before it. you let yeah, it in. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I mean. So the other person would be the president Unless it was situation. like, unless it's like, you know, my phone's there, and she's like, we want to. We want, oh, we want to see those those uh, dresses, and she just grabs it. In which case, I'll shoot you in the mouth. I mean, that, in which case, you like you dive across the fucking <laughs> table. You grab that thing. I mean, I, I I know you've talked about this, but I think this needs to become like canon. This needs to be like part of the rules, like like the way we go to the bathroom alone, right? That is just accepted in society. Well, I guess girls like go together, but you know what I mean. Like just like that's something you do alone at all times. That needs to be your phone. Like, it's only you. you yeah. Would, you would never, like, go to the bathroom with your girlfriend and vice versa, and that should be your phone as well. You never share phones. You never – because you know what the problem is? It's it's not it's, – it's harmless shit when it's, like, when things are going good, you're like, oh, let me order let's, – let's order food, babe. Uh, like, here, let me scroll through the menu, and I'll do it, you know? Yeah. And then it's like, oh, what's your passcode? Like, it's, it locks. Dude, I even that. hate – And then you tell her the passcode, and then you have to change your passcode, and then that looks shady, and all these things, and it's just like – that's only because you did some casual sharing of the phone. Just never. Yep. The same way you would never be like, yeah, I'll hold your dick while you pee. It's just like, no, <laughs> it's not a thing. I even get uncomfortable when I, like, I'll, I'll do things now where if like, oh, have you seen this video? Oh, you haven't? I'll text I'll send you. it to you. Yep. Yes. Yes. Go ahead, you look at it. Yes. I'm not fucking holding my but, phone up. Like, but that. Text or tweets come in. That like, is oh. like, I think we need to normalize that. Because I think that looks, people think that's like shady. And it's like, that should be the norm. It's, like, it's, you do not touch. Ever. No. You do not look ever. I'm waiting for the day that they do something where it's like my eyeballs only. You know how they have those screens, like the protector screens where you, you can't look from the side? Yes. They need to do something where that's like literal. Like they, only my eyeballs can actually see it. Oh, yeah? Yeah. It's. I saw it on Reddit. It's like, uh, I mean, someone did it themselves. It's not something for sale. But it was basically like they made special glasses. That so like, I have to have the glasses and then the, you have and to have a screen. Well, this could cool. be a pain in the ass. So yeah, like, I don't want to have to have a screen on. But that's what I mean. Like one day that they can... If how about this? Would you be willing willing to wear contacts if it did that? No, I don't fuck with eyes. Yeah, me neither. What, that, is, what, what do they call it? Uh, because of the P, pederast? Nope, that's a rapist. 
Nope. Yeah. No, it's a pedophile. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Definitely not that. Um, Whatever you're talking about, let's not be that. Pick pick a something. Pick a phobia, something like that. Uh, obsessed with. I'm just gonna Google obsessed with eyes. It's a, a pickerist, maybe. Okay. I think it might be upset. And you are you are that or you are not I'm that? I'm the opposite of that. Yeah. I'm terrified of eyes. I can't believe that there are people who have to, like, pinch this fucking plasticky lens into their eyeballs every day just to be able to see. That is a nightmare. But if you told me that, like, this phone is nothing more than just a plastic glass piece of nothing to anybody except if you have those eyes on, I mean, that's how you end up getting your head chopped off and your eyeballs ripped out by the bad guys, though. You know? That would do it, Yeah. Where it's like they gotta access this phone, <laughs> they pull it out, and then they like I don't know, hold it up to it or something. Um, I can't find the name. I, the only reason I know it is because it was from in the following, the, the show, the following. Yeah, yeah. Kevin Bacon says that that's what that it's guy just, was. That's why he like chopped the eyes out and stuff. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah. If they can come up with some technology that does that, you know, they're already doing facial recognition and stuff, and it's like, what if it's like th- that's the only time the screen is like even legible or some shit? I don't know. They should get on that. They should. I, I would do that in a fucking heartbeat. Steve Jobs. Do it and again, it's not even I know like you're alive. it's not even. Yeah, totally. <laughs> totally. <laughs> I seen the picture in Brazil. Well, fuck, yeah. know what's up? Fucking do the eye thing. It, it's just not even like if you're cheating, if you're shady, if you're doing something illegal. It's just like privacy and and again, like you said, it's like I don't know what my other people are gonna text me or send right. me or do. That's like, not I, my responsibility. I got a lot of wild fucking people in my life, you know? <laughs> uh, all right, last voicemail of the day is brought to you by MVMT. I mean, you know the name. Get you your, get you your know blue what lights. it yeah, is. I've been, I've been rocking blue lights. Maybe MVMT can do that. Yeah. They, they could do the glasses with the screen. You've been rocking them? Yeah. For it, style or for eyeballs? No, for eyeballs. Because yeah. I, I, it was never, it was an MVMT ad read that, that put me over the top on it where it was like... Um, because when I close my eyes at night, I could feel my eyes still darting mm-hmm. around. And I didn't, I thought that was just like me. I thought that was just my own psycho problems. Yeah. And no, it's everybody. It's like, you know what happens to me? I'm staring at screens. I close my eyeballs for an extended period of time. It feels like there is, like there is boiling water in there. Really? Like my eyes sting so bad. For when screens? I finally just, I probably, like screens, lights. And I, I, I think that's hair loss and eyeball like problems. I think are two things that like you have to do it when you have it, when your eyes are still good. You know, what yeah, I mean? like yeah, start yeah. rocking the the blue light glasses now. Once your eyes are fucked, mm-hmm. I don't think the glasses help. You know, mm-hmm. they always help, but it's not going to fix the problem. You got to keep the eyesight. So when you have good eyes, is when you should be rocking the blue light filtering. And uh, I mean, nowadays, you know, my screen time. I don't know how to. I got to do it. Like, I reset my phone the other day or whatever, and I guess these screen time notifications start popping up, and it tells me how many hours. It's it's never dude. I mine I is actually. Like I'm actually that. pretty good at it. Yeah, you're way better than I am. I'm, I'm at like 18 hours one time or some shit. I was like, holy Christ Almighty. So MVMT, uh, they the the glasses. My daily average is three hours. Wow, really? Three, three hours. Oh wait, nope. It just went up four hours, 22 minutes. But still, that's up 34 like, percent from last week. Was it? It's called screen time. If I if I search that. Yeah, I just screen time. That. Oh, hmm. four hours. <laughs> Nope, five hours. It did. It just did the, the pop up too. <laughs> five hours, fifteen minutes. But I'm telling you, I got a thing the other day that was like in the teens, and I was like, "Holy <laughs> fuck!" That is crazy. The teens is nuts. It couldn't have been. It must have been to- like added up or something. Yeah. There's no way I'm on my phone for sixteen hours. I'm only like awake for sixteen hours. Right. You know. Um. So you know, if you're gonna be on the screen four or five hours or multiple, I think like I think Bailey Carlin is like twelve hours. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. Uh. In in this era, you need it. And then also they've got the uh, I, I you know it's something in our lifetime I think in our lifetime movement will be known as the the glasses not even the watches they started as the watches now with, That's the, true, with yeah. the sunglasses and the eyeglasses especially with how much our eyeballs are like burning out of our heads uh, they might be more important uh, with the glasses than the watches but the watches are also uh, this is the perfect time I can tell Christmas season they're ramping up perfect gift. The perfect gift for like, it's a good price point, so you're not spending too much money on anybody. It's actually useful. You get a movement watch. Now you can pair it with the sunglasses or the eyeglasses, so it's like a whole accessory kit. If you're gonna do like a secret Santa, if you're gonna do, if you're buying for like a friend or like a family member who's not like a big gift, perfect. And it's like, it's not, you know, it's not like a a presumptuous gift. It's just like, bam, you could use this. A new watch, new glasses, you'll like it. So uh, it's a little bit early, but hey, we're already starting the Christmas season. Movement watches start at just 95 bucks. Uh, The glasses to match, you can get 15% off with free shipping and free returns when you go to MVMT, 
dot com slash kfc movement watches at mvmt dot com slash kfc get 15 percent off plus free shipping and free returns at mvmt dot com slash kfc hey kevin fights whoever's producing today uh yo kevin i just wanted to say real quick i uh, watched your one minute man about joe rogan and kanye west and me and my buddy were stoned off our asses watching it and the entire time we're saying the exact same shit you were like, it made no goddamn sense. So, uh, a quick question for you, though, real quick. When you go, when someone goes out to eat, or they're, they're going to a fast food chain restaurant, they're like, hey, you want to come with me? Um, like, they say the name of the, the place. Do you immediately know what your order is going to be, or do you have to stop and think about it? Like, when someone tells me, hey, uh, I'm going to Chick-fil-A, you want anything? Like, that, as soon as they say the word chick, like, I know exactly what I'm getting. Uh, and I was wondering if that's just me, uh, or if you all thought, thought the same thing. So, no, thanks, guys. Common. Let me know. Chick what was the first thing he said that didn't make sense? Uh, like the first half of the voicemail? Yeah. He was saying uh, he was watching One Minute Man that I did on Kanye West oh, okay. and Joe Rogan saying that like him and his buddy were stoned and they totally agreed with like everything I was saying because anybody with like a normal brain and a normal outlook on life can watch that. And even if you are a Kanye fan, if you were watch- listening to that podcast, you could say, this is like gobbledygook. This is just like nonsense. Mm-hmm. There's nothing that doesn't mean you don't like Kanye or whatever. Uh, I watched uh, David Letterman. Uh, talk to Kim K. You seen his interview series at all? Yes. Can I? I have, can we talk um, about David I Letterman? I don't know that I watched the Kim Kardashian. What do you think about David Letterman? Uh, I get. Okay. Okay. Wait. I got furious about it. I, I didn't see the full Kim K one. Okay. Um, but I did catch one of it, uh-huh. and I got so fucking mad because he's at, a, at he, Letterman. He's at the same thing as as like Howard Stern and stuff like that, where it's like. I don't find him to be a particularly great interviewer. He's just Letterman, so he, people want to impress him. He is anointed right now as like this the, I don't know like like yeah like a Howard Stur- like they talk about him people talk about him like he and I, I'm not I mean he's obviously wildly successful mm-hmm. but like he was on the air every single night for a zillion years mm-hmm. and people were not like revering him again I'm kind of splitting hairs because like I know he was popular and very well liked but he is talked about now in a way like Pat wrote a blog about him interviewing Chappelle and it was almost like he was on the same level as Chappelle, where people talk about him in this way. I thought like, the Chappelle one was fine. I it thought was... all of it is very, yeah. I, I I don't. I what is he doing that like I I hate Dude, to Kim, sound silly, but like I could do, we could do that interview. The Kim we were one just talking to them was so because she gave such a great answer when when he was speaking nonsense. Uh, no that part. Because oh. I, I, again, I didn't see the whole thing. Okay. I, I just saw right. like. I like walked in the living room and, and she was watching something, so I kind of just sat down and, and so I, I didn't see the full thing. I didn't put it on, but I saw the Paris question. Yeah, and he was like, "So tell me." Like I think the prompt was, "So tell, tell me, me about, yes, about Paris." Yes, and it was like he's like, "Yeah, you mentioned uh, you mentioned at one point he's like you mentioned Kanye. You're married to him. What's that like?" So right. Like, what? That's it, not even like a real segue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was like he was like, "So tell me about Paris." Whereas like if we ask that, and again I get like if you're at a certain level, you demand a certain answer. Yes. But like if we asked that, she'd be like, "That was a terrible time. Like, I haven't talked about that anymore." I, that's why I I I, like, I, I like, want to be careful. Like I I literally mean this. I could do that same interview. If Kim gave me that same respect, right? If Kim, if I if and I, I get you, they're under respect. Like that's fine. I I, I understand percent. that thousand percent. But even that is like, I don't think he. I don't want to sound like an asshole. Like David Letterman hasn't earned it, but it's like Howard Stern to me is known as this like interviewer. You mm-hmm. know, David Letterman's been doing like tell me like press junket interviews for fucking zillions of years. Yeah, you know, like I don't think he. I, I'm very surprised to see that he's been like canonized by everyone. Where it's like he is the media elite now where it's like he was he's jimmy fallon he's jimmy kimmel he's like and he he was a comedian yeah like yeah certainly iconic but to be like you know it's the sit down interview you must hear dude kim's answer to that was so incredible like it was a 10 out of 10 answer yeah and all he said like like she's talking about how like she's getting tied up and she was only in a nightgown she was like like, i'm gonna get raped i'm gonna get raped like you're about to get raped prepare for that get ready for it and she's talking about like Courtney coming home from the club and finding, finding her, her like her dead like on the floor, right? And like all, all that shit was fucking insane. Like she's crying and it was like it was crazy. That like it, she gave a great, very vivid and descriptive answer yeah. about like someone who thought they were about to die and like all the thoughts going through her head and stuff like that. And like it was an incredible answer. But all he said was like Paris was crazy. Tell me about that. Yeah. And it was like and then and then anyone you, can you, say that. And I don't know if uh, I, that I don't like that that whole series because it's very edited. Mm. Like you can hear where they cut to the applause like right after. Yeah. It's like the, that wasn't a natural ending. That was like a applause next segment. And so maybe it's he's a victim of editing. But like I don't think any of it is that like award winning. And and so the one thing I was talking about was 
Uh, he was talking to her about being a lawyer. And Kim was pretty honest where she's like, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not going to law school, but I am doing this like apprenticeship thing where you learn the ins and outs. Mm -hmm. And then they talked about her advocacy and how she like is working with Donald Trump. And Letterman says something like, does his advocacy work with you create a, a corridor of viability that erases the, like something like that, like <laughs> crazy. And Kim was like, she's like literally playing with her hair and she's like, well, I don't know what you just said. <laughs> and, and then he, he corrected himself and was like, I, basically like, he's done such good work with you, does that outweigh all the negative of this administration? Mm -hmm. But he and he was he was choosing his words carefully, and that's why it was such a fragmented like question. But it was like, what the fuck are you? I'm I'm so happy that like Kim said that, and rather than try to answer it, because she was like, what the fuck does that mean, dude? <laughs> but I can't believe that that David Letterman is getting the Howard Stern treatment, or even even like the Joe Rogan treatment. It's like like Joe Rogan at least is like oh these podcasters or Mark Marins of the world, people who like have done these Barbara Walters even like interviews. It's like David Letterman's in that, and then the the other. Like when they went to the CVS together, it was like terrible. Nice, yeah, They're doing like a there's a pre tape segment where they went to a CVS together, and he was like the old goofy guy, like making old terrible goofy jokes. And I was like, this is not that good, guys. Yeah. This is just not that good. Yeah. Everyone's like, did you see the Letterman series? And it's like all the guests are awesome. And yes, if you want to say that he's earned it and all that, so he'll get the the best of the best, sure. But what he does once he gets them, not impressed. I was like, like Chappelle. I, there's there's I, I watched most of them from this season. I watched RDJ, who RDJ like looks like. Uh, and he was wearing some wacky shit. This is he because cool. of his past, but mm -hmm. like you just assume, like I'm like he's coked out of his mind, and which he isn't. But like he and he like he even acknowledges the gum in his mouth because mm -hmm. he kept making all these weird like facial ticks, and it was because he was like chewing gum. I think he was saying he was parking his gum like in different places. His nicotine oh yeah, gum. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh and, right, he's like I'm gonna need another nicotine. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And it, but like he was like just like he he seemed like he was not like comfortable. Or he seemed weird. Too. Yeah, it was. There were there were. I, I think I watched like, most of this season. And I, there isn't one episode where I'm like, you have to see this interview. No, there's and, like, I mean, even just from from having done like behind the blog interviews, which I understand are not like anywhere near this level, but you either have to do like a long one, or you can't talk about like every topic. Like mm -hmm. he, I mean, they went through like Dave Chappelle's entire like childhood, where it's like there's just not enough time to talk about all this shit. You yeah. know what I mean? Because you're only gonna get like surface level for each like section, which I guess there's value in that. But I'd rather. It's just like the Kim one wasn't even that long. I don't know. It's it, I I was very surprised to see, to watch that and be like, this is what people have been like raving about. I I, I was an early adapter to it, so I've seen most of them. Like I watched season one when it yeah. first came out, which is probably three years ago or so. Yeah, he had Jay Z like on, right? That was a big he had one. Jay Z. I don't, I don't know if I watched, I watched the Jay Z one. I watched the Obama one. The Obama one was fine. It yeah. was like same thing. Because it's it's it is like um, late night questions and answers. Like it's not he's not really grilling you. He, he's he doesn't ask like the tough question. He's just kind of like. You go, mm -hmm. like you do it, you know. Very strange. Um, anyway, uh, what was the question? How do we get there? It was this is the fast food. Yeah, how the fuck did we get there? <laughs> uh, the fast food. No, I think everyone's got a pretty much a standard order. <laughs> I, fuck did we get there? I don't. I have no idea. <laughs> I have no clue. But like, I mean, you deviate a little bit. But like McDonald's, That's... I'm probably getting a double cheeseburger. Chick Fil A, I'm probably getting a spicy yeah, like, chicken. Yeah, like I have probably two orders. When I go to Taco Bell, I either get three cheesy or three crunches, or I get like a bunch of just regular tacos. When I go to McDonald's, I either get Big Macs or I get double cheeseburgers with the Mac sauce. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll get like a number two if I'm like not like I get the two cheeseburgers. I think it's like number nine now. You Wendy's know, getting a spicy chicken. Yeah, like, well, yeah. Wendy, Wendy's I'm pretty steadfast. I do junior bacon cheeseburgers and and nuggets. But I might get a chicken. I get I get a junior bacon cheeseburger on the side. Yeah, I get that. I get two junior bacon cheeseburgers and like two orders of, of of nuggets. Um, Burger but, King, but I do a Whopper Junior. What's funny is that he used Chick Fil A. Chick Fil A would be the one place I wouldn't. I mean, I guess you could just say like what spicy chicken sandwich. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I would have it, but I don't know that menu like the back of my hand like the other. No, ones. I mean they basically just have chicken sandwiches. Yeah. Um, but like I know like sometimes I've had the Polynesian sauce, sometimes I've had the Chick Fil A sauce. I do like I don't know that as well, but I think in general most people know. You have I, you 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 might have three things. You're never you gonna like, go and be like you know what today I'm getting the fillet of fish. Right, I'm, it's just not that's just not happening. <laughs> I'll do a salad today. Yeah, not you know what is good actually. I'm gonna the taco salad at Wendy's. They give you a cup of chili, some sour cream, and then like a just like lettuce with shredded cheese and stuff. It's basically like eating chili, but and it comes with a, a bag of like tortilla chips and good chili, and you mix it up. It's a good salad. Yeah, yeah. 
Is it? Is that? I'll write that down. If you ever doing like like uh, no carbs, you can do like a chili like taco salad from Wendy's. It's pretty fucking fire. Uh, but yeah, I think it's kind of crazy. If you go to a place, uh, I know a guy. He's he's dating. A, he was dating a girl who like needed to look at the menu always. You know, like we're going to like our local neighborhood spots. Mm-hmm. Like you know the menu. Right. You know what you know. And she, like, hang on, I need to look. And he would just be like, fucking, you know you're going to get the quesadillas. Just fucking do it. Yeah. <laughs> That'll drive you crazy. Yeah. That, that, that's <laughs> enough right there to drive a man crazy. Uh, all right, let's get into our interview with Luis J. Gomez from the Legion of Skanks. Uh, truly the last, like, bastion of, like, don't give a fuckness. I think, like, come towns like that, too. Yeah. Right? I've never listened to that, but those guys, uh, like, seem to not give a shit. And, you know, there's a couple comedians here and there who will always let it fly. Some individual people, like Tim Dillon's The World and, like, Rogan to an extent. But as far as, like, a crew of guys, kind of like a little like a little company, uh, Louis J. Gomez, Big J, Dave Smith, now Ari, Shane Gillis, all, like, the peripheral people who are kind of joining up. Lewis running uh, the Legion of Skanks is is pretty admirable for like I mean I I hate knowing that we can't always just like totally speak our mind or say whatever we want and uh and well I guess we could you know if we wanted to we really could and and that's what these guys do they just still let it fucking fly so uh we talked a little bit about Seth Simons in that interview I don't know yeah. you don't really follow oh him yeah I actually because I think Lewis like quote tweeted someone about him the other day or something like that so I went to click on this thing and are you blocked, blocked. blocked. yeah me too yeah <laughs> I'm like what I was the like I never even heard fuck? of this guy until you know the, until the interview the other day I, I guess that's just like I just can't imagine the preemptive proactive block like. I don't like this person, so I got to take some time out of my day to just block his whole gang, his right. whole crew, anybody who ever liked this tweet. Like when Rico does it, I laugh about it, but it's like people who really do it where it's like, all right, I got to start connecting the dots. You know him. You like him. You do a show with him. Da, 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 block, 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 block. It's fucking insane. It's particularly insane. I think he, I think he's like a comedy blogger. I think we talk about it, like comedy journalist or some shit. It's like blocking people is like you shooting yourself in the foot. Yeah. Like you want less people to see your work. Also, how do you become a comedy journalist? Yeah, like, uh, it's pretty it's a very it's pretty, strange thing. It's so subjective. I mean, I think he's like the only one for a reason. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's <laughs> like, "What the fuck is this?" So anyway, we talk about this guy who's like kind of trying to tear them down. We talk about the there's a a princess bride poisoning story in this with LSD with Ari, Big J, and Lewis. I think that's one of the funniest stories ever. <laughs> 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 that didn't feel good at all. <laughs> I was getting lightheaded in about ten uh-huh. seconds. I yeah, I was I was I was ready to go right away. <laughs> all right, let's do it. Uh, we got Luis J. Gomez in the building, man. What's up, kid? Very happy to have you here. We appreciate you coming through. Thank you. Um, I feel like it's been uh, even crazier than usual for the Legion of Skanks. Is, would you say yes or no to that? I mean, you guys are always fucking wild, but maybe I just started paying more attention. But between the election and that crazy fucking drunk fan at the show, you're doing the MMA fight, uh, Seth Simons and everyone chirping. It just yeah. seems like everywhere I look, you know, the, the Legion of Skanks is crazy. Yeah, you know, crazy is always good, though. You know, uh, you know, yeah, emotion right. sells. You get people emotional. Yeah. This is why mm-hmm. Trump's in office, because people <laughs> yeah. are too emotional, you yeah, know? for sure. And I think that... Um, yeah, I mean, it is sort of, uh, it's always a little bit of a crazy time. I I have a theory in this business. If you don't have anything going on, then make something happen. Yeah. So if, if I don't have an announcement to make, I say I have an announcement next Friday, and then I got to figure out an announcement by next Friday. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that's sort of what's been going on. Legion Stank subreddit was just killed a couple days ago. I saw ago. that. So what happened there? Uh, you know, like meaning, fans, meaning what? Like Reddit took it, like stopped yeah, it or something? Yeah, Reddit, like, Reddit it down? as a whole said that the community was racist and spreading hate speech. Mm. And now that's, you know, we don't run our suburb. If you know the way Reddit works. Reddit's a fucking. These are fan communities. The, the day you know? that ours will get uh, knocked down, I love it. <laughs> get rid of those motherfuckers. Yeah, because half of them, they hate, they hate you half the yeah. time. Oh, but it, it is. Of the time. Look, the internet, it's supposed to be a place where people can share ideas. It's supposed to yeah. be somewhat free. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if you're going to say racist things, yeah, make it on an anonymous message board. Yeah. Keep on <laughs> taking away these platforms from people. They're yeah. going to start doing and saying crazy racist things in real life. Just let them do their Reddit thing. Just let them say the, let them say the comments on YouTube. Let them say the comments on Reddit and yeah. Twitter. And then guess what? In real life, we all just fucking, everyone's kumbaya. Mm. Everyone, everyone is, we're all coexisting in real life. That's an interesting we all walk thought. On the street, I don't give yeah. a fuck with that guy who he's voting for, what yeah. his po- political or social views are. We don't give a shit. If I go to the deli and I want to buy a sandwich, I don't give a fuck Good. with the deli yeah. owner who he's voting for. 
give me my sandwich. Except for that bucks. dude who knocked out uh, Rick Moranis. Everyone else is just walking down the street. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, that one guy was not having yeah, it. Yeah, but you see that face. Come on, dude. <laughs> just... Oh, I totally get punching Rick Moranis in the head. Like, yeah. without a doubt. I'm surprised. Rick that guy Moranis... might not even be that violent or crazy. He was just like, nah. Yeah, <laughs> Rick Moranis was surprised everyone cared. Like, it's been happening for 30 years. Could you like, imagine that man? You're in, he's in hiding, though, for... Not hiding, but he was not... I feel like he didn't come out of his house for like 30 years. And yeah. then one day he does, he gets knocked the fuck he, out. It was like he was like in a Ryan Reynolds commercial. Yeah. And the next day I was like, oh, I forgot Popped. how much I fucking hate your face, dude. Yeah, what a, what a, it's so funny. That was like a, uh, remember a couple years ago when the biggest problem in the world was the knockout game? The knockout game. game. That yeah. was it. Like, that was like, like yeah. dude, 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 they're coming for Which you, dude. Which was a fucking problem, though, man. That was fucking crazy. Uh, <laughs> you, I mean, I guess doing for, it to people. for the Rick Moranises of the world, you know, yeah. for, for yeah. me and my friends, you're it was like, just like, good, good, clean fun, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess, it, you know, I mean, how, how often are people just being attacked? It's, it's not happening too often. But yeah, the, the whole online world, uh, I don't know. I, I sort of like, I appreciate it. The, you know, the type of comedy that Legion of Skanks does, you know, nobody's really doing that type no, of comedy you anymore. Guys, you guys are like the last, I feel like. Yeah. Uh, you know, we we kind of we never probably went as as hard as you guys did in general. But even Barstool, there's just like a lot more on the line, and people grew up and got families, and there's just like money to lose. And we kind of like not like we sold out, but it's just not the same as what it once was. You guys, I feel like, are well, ratcheting it up. The parameters change constantly, right? So yeah. you're right. You, you know, like look, we do a certain brand of humor, but I come onto a show like this, I'm not doing the same type of humor oh, we're let doing it rip on that though. show. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, and it, we do to a certain degree, but Legion of Skanks, I mean, that brand, you know, we, we and this was very deliberate, right? We started calling it the most offensive podcast Yeah, so uh, my question was like, at what point do you, because th- what I don't like is, is uh, uh, being controversial for the sake of being controversial. Yeah. You know, and that that's where I think it can start to get like inorganic and it can start to be like phony. Like you're just saying this to say this. Controversial is the wrong word. So we are dirty for the sake of being dirty, edgy for the sake of being edgy. Controversial. It's not controversial to me. Mm-hmm. Right. This is how it's comics opinion, talk to right. each other in cars. You know right, what I'm saying? We're not really right. it's not even opinionated. It's not like we have these like social po- opinions or these no, political yeah. opinions. We're saying stupid shit. Mm-hmm. You remember that movie, um, that documentary, uh, Oh, what the fuck was the the, the about the joke? Um, the aristocrats. Mm-hmm. Remember that came out a few years ago, and uh, you know it was an old joke, I guess, that comics used to tell. And the idea of the joke was you would try to say the most offensive shit on p- possible in this joke, mm-hmm. um, and they made a whole documentary about it. And they had like fifty comics do their own versions of this joke, and everybody right, was doing right, this right. really offensive joke. And the point wasn't to be controversial or fan people. The point was to see how you can riff within those parameters. Right, and it's each other not and, easy to fucking yeah. say offensive shit and get people to laugh anymore. People are pussies. You go to a comedy club or you go online, people are looking to be offended. Mm. So it's become almost like a, a different sort of type of comedy. Um, and that's what I compare Legion of Skanks to. So we are, every episode, we are genuinely trying to be offensive. Right. When we're going over yeah. the notes. It's not like, well, what happened today? But it, But it's like within the... The framework of comedy, right? Of like, like you're not going to say something you don't believe just to be offensive. No, it's you'll, when but the, you'll it, be like, how can I describe my opinion on this matter? The only, which I'm being true to. The only truth is the only truth is way. funny, right? The yeah. or with with us, right? right so right, right. yeah, we might say something absurd or something sexist or racial or whatever it is um, for this for the sake of being funny in the moment, right? So that's where this is where you get caught when I go, well, no, I mean this and I don't mean this. It's all jokes. Like, mm-hmm. we're fucking around. The reality is we're just trying to be as funny as possible. Um, if we start to subcategorize, well, no, well, this thing I really meant and this thing I didn't really mean. Uh, I mean it, we, you'll you, never you, stop doing that. Right, exactly. And if I start forever. apologizing for, what, well, that yeah. was a joke and that's not yeah, a joke, yeah. then you're fucked. The you're second right. you apologize, the second you say, I'm, I, sh- I went too far, I shouldn't, you're fucked. Yeah. You are absolutely fucked. So we are completely unapologetic. The show is really offensive. If you get you know triggered by... Certain words, all the no-no words that you're not supposed to say, it's not going to be the show for you. But the reason we branded it as the most offensive podcast on earth is because nobody really knocks on our door without knowing that. And this is why I think we don't get in trouble the same way other people get in trouble. Because if somebody says, oh, can you believe the Legion of Skanks said that? People are like, yeah, Yeah. it's the most offensive podcast on earth. That's what they do. (laughs) I've always said that like it's better to be... Fucking wild, and everything you do is crazy. Like, I always use the comparison of Dennis Rodman to Alex Rodriguez. Yeah. Dennis Rodman, every fucking thing he's ever done is crazy. Yeah. So, when you hear a story about him, like he, you know, fucked this person or fought this person or whatever, you're just like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, who and cares? A Rod, who was like squeaky clean, of course. he does some steroids, and people were like, 
well, kick him out of the this and that. Because it's like what you're used to, the baseline is normal, and then he deviates from that. Whereas when you're just fucking all over the place, yeah. no one's going to get, no, no one's going to ever be up in arms that knows Legion of Skanks and cares about it. Exactly. You know? Unless and you're looking to be up in arms. We've developed this fan base. They don't give a fuck. They don't I mean, fuck. We, I think I could murder a baby on air and they'd be like, cool. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> Let's that, go. They are, they are, they, the, the Skank Onya fans <laughs> yeah. are, they, they're, they're they a really hardcore Legion. fan base. And and it's great that look you want to have people like dude none of our fan base we get we get sort of categorized as this like you know Trump supporters are right wing well, you're like, a proud boy right oh obviously I'm fourth degree proud boy <laughs> but it's like our fan base couldn't be any less political couldn't give a shit about yeah I mean they're trash people you guys are trash bags yeah you we're know what literally I mean? garbage people <laughs> yeah. who are just trying to get high get fucked up have a good time so, laugh at shitty jokes so you like like Shane Gillis kind of like is in the mix now right He's like in it's the mix. yeah and that's like relatively newish. Uh, it, within our world, yeah. or so no Shane. I mean, Shane's been a friend of the show for a long time, right? You I, know? I just, I guess, I was talking to him relatively recently, and you know, I get, you know, because he was in the running as what a uh, vice president, I believe. Your uh, vice president Ari Shafir uh, is the president of Legion of Skanks. Ari Shafir is not one of the on best things I saw. He's not on Legion this of Skanks. This is the best. <laughs> Ari Shafir is the president of Legion of Skanks. He's not on the show. He's not on the show. So tonight, <laughs> what's funny is the we we did a whole presidential election, which is sort of a hack radio bit, but we did it our I own way. It. And we just spent two months doing this, you know, every single week, a new event. And Ari's just a psycho. He's Ari a brings out the man. best in us. Yeah. And Love him or hate him. Yeah. 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 He's just going to, he's just like a force. He gets in the room. You're like, all right, dude, we got to pull our dicks out. This is Ari's here. You know, <laughs> yeah. somebody's got a shit in a hat right now because Ari's here, you know? <laughs> and that is like, you know, he definitely brought out like, you know, we, we started to just try to outdo each other. And yes, it became this competition of, yeah. of, of, trying to be you know dirty and filthy and be funny and and try to surprise each other and it, it all culminated with Big J Okerson who's one of the Legion of Skanks being um dosed with acid you know the story no, in the, the final incredible. episode Ari so listen this, to huh? this though yeah yeah Ari's his move but Ari like they tried to outdo Ari so here's they tried happened. to out Ari Ari and Ari knew what was going on it was incredible I fucked up <laughs> I fucked up yeah. I'll tell you right now it was on me I fucked up I thought that I can outsmart Ari Shafir Can't nobody listen to me nobody <laughs> nobody can outsmart Ari Shafir that's a fact I'll tell you right now okay <laughs> so Ari Shafir about a year ago uh, dosed Burt Kreischer with Molly yep. at his house and it was a whole thing like their friendship li behind the scenes was legitimately in question, like yeah. real issues. For a while, right? Real I, I issues with their friendship. Now, but I was like, like, I had to go home to my kids. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not happy. Yeah. So I was like, fuck this dude. Ari's been killing us. I knew he was gonna win the election. I was like, I'm gonna fucking dose Ari tonight. So this kid brought acid to the show. He was like, do you want acid? I was like, yeah, I want acid. <laughs> so I, uh, I had my employees. This is illegal to even say. I think at this point, <laughs> I gave it to my employee. I was like, make sure this gets in Ari Shafir's beer. Okay, just put a tab of acid in his beer. Now, I fucked up and I told Shane, thinking that Shane, you know, look, I get that he's on Team Ari, but at the same time, it's pretty goddamn funny to dose Ari Shafir with acid on Legion of Skanks. <laughs> yeah. Let us just do it. All right. Let us do it. I assumed that Shane would just let it happen because that is the absolute funniest scenario. No. Well, I don't know. <laughs> Shane goes and tells Ari, okay? So this, ha this all happens on camera. So you can go back and watch this episode. You see the moment where Big J gets up to do some little speech. Ari takes the beer, switches it with Jay's. Big J. Now, Big J's never done acid in his life. He has massive anxiety as it is. He's an innocent fucking bystander right now. I didn't know Big J's never. Big J looks like a guy who does acid. No, no, no. Big J is a pussy Acid's when it comes to hallucinogens. I don't know. Acid. I don't, I'm not going to call someone a pussy if they don't do acid. I think that's a pretty Real decent line to Real bitch move to not take LSD and give 12 hours of your life to being on another planet. In my opinion. So, Jay starts drinking it, right? And then, you know, I'm having this moment. It's such, it's brilliant. You got to give Ari so much credit for this yeah. because in this moment, like Ari starts acting like he's on acid. So he's like, like looking at the lights. <laughs> And me and my whole side of the table are cracking up like we fucking we got, got him. him. <laughs> Finally, we got Ari. We know he's gonna win, but fuck it. At least he's <laughs> tripping on acid now. So I get up and I start gloating like I am the king of mayhem, Ari. Yeah. <laughs> you ain't got shit on me. And then his face just stops it. He goes, "Oh, really?" Uh, and they reveal that Jay is dosed. And you just see D Jay starts to panic. He's like, "Whoa!" I'm losing. <laughs> Did the show ends with Jay? I mean, Jay leaves trips for 26 hours. <laughs> Furious with all of his friends for two weeks straight. We question whether or not we're going to continue with Legion of Skanks. <laughs> it was wild. So tonight, 
from mm. here, I'm going to meet up with my quote unquote lawyers. <laughs> We're having the trial of the century. Myself <laughs> versus Ari Shafir love, on love Legion of Skank. Who is more responsible for Jay's dosing? It's me incredible. for introducing the acid or Ari for actually dosing him? <laughs> so that we're doing Sal Volcano. And Shane, I feel like Shane Gillis has got to be. Shane you is know? A, Shane's a co defendant. Sal Volcano <laughs> yeah. from the Impractical Jokers is the judge. We have a 12 comic <laughs> panel of jurors. <laughs> it's so fucking stupid, dude. It's, I love That's it, though. I mean, the, the election. And when people was try to say that we're this political, I'm like, dude, what are you talking about? We are dumb. Like, yeah. literally, like, <laughs> this is where we thrive. And I feel You're like. We're drugging each other. Everyone else, for some reason, there needs to be this. Like more serious tone to content, yeah. whatever it is. You know, if you go, you watch a sporting event now. People are taking knees and they're fucking arguing about this, that, mm. and the other. You watch Saturday Night Live; it's all political. All the comedy content, all the movies, everything that goes out there. There's just this this tone constantly, and we just don't give a fuck. Yeah. There's none of that when it comes down to what we do. So and I'm I think just not that's playing why by your rules. Like yeah. I, I hate when pe it happens with celebrities, and I guess comics to an extent now, where it's like you have more, like, more so. Uh, just celebrities, actors, and shit. You have an obligation with your platform. It's like fuck you. Yeah, I, we get that sometimes too. It's like I have an obligation to like my goddamn self. That's like, it. I, have an I want obligation I, my, to my obligation kid. is to I gotta pay bills. Yeah, I gotta and I want to try to make you laugh. And like you know, we we in the, in the past year, uh, I probably got caught up more so than anybody apart still talking about George Floyd and the protests and all that saying shit that I believe to be just like common sense mm -hmm. and I realized like you can't win I'm getting it from every side yeah, I'm you'll never fans win. and I was just like so I'm just not doing this anymore yeah that's not like, that's well, not you, why you people are to. here it's yeah like, no I fucking don't well, who, who said that that I'm not a, um I'm not a role model there's a famous uh, yeah, Charles Barkley yeah, yeah Charles Barkley yeah. exactly that's exactly yeah man I, you know and like, raise I, your own fucking kids I, you yeah. almost you feel you know I think as a you know as a brown person a minority I think women deal with it a lot there there's this other you know, like, oh, you have a responsibility for your people. It's like, well, my my people aren't defined by my skin tone. I got to be honest mm -hmm. with you. My people are defined by who lives under my fucking roof. Yeah. <laughs> Simple as that. Mm -hmm. That's it. And, uh, yeah, the, I, I think that, yeah, there, there's a lot of that right now. And um, we don't, uh, you know... I have my own personal beliefs, and I, I do have. I, I read the I read the news, and I there's things that I really care about. Um, but the only responsibility that I have, or honestly, the only thing that I can really do is create shit that make people laugh. What what can I do? Like the 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 more important thing for me, I can go and make you know a shit ton of people laugh every single week when we do these shows, and create, in my opinion, what is very tangible positive energy, a real positive thing. And when people are like, dude, how could you joke about something like that? I'm like, what are you talking about? I, we made thousands of people in a collective moment laugh and yeah. breathe a, a moment of, of fresh air and, and, and relief and not think about all the bad shit that's going on in the world. I think there's only positivity from that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree mm -hmm. with that. Uh, do, you, do you think that like this, you know, the most offensive podcast on the world, do you think that that could only exist in the podcast era? Like we were talking about that recently. Like I think it's hard to get canceled now because... You're like my fans like me. It doesn't yeah. Like, like eyes aren't going away. They like like someone could say like, oh, I'm not gonna go watch that actress movie, whatever. Like, like my family's my fans like me because of this. So yeah. you can't you can't really cancel me. The, the Skanks fans are gonna be as long as your fans are bigger than the mob. Yeah. You'll always win. For You'll the, always for be the most okay. Part, I mean, look, right? I think where we're trending, yeah, it's gonna be harder and harder, right? right? So you look at Reddit, you look at YouTube, you look at these platforms, which are, you know, they're 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 regularly just taking away opportunities from people that are just, you know, saying, st you know, stupid words, mm -hmm. you know, and the whole deplatforming thing, we don't got to get into the bigger conversation, but I think it will get harder and harder. I think eventually iTunes will yeah. get rid of guys like Legion of Skanks. Right. I'm wondering, all I was these thinking companies. that, like, I'm surprised that Apple hasn't even really dabbled in that yet. They are the one, you got to be honest, you got to give Apple some credit because they just are like, hands stay off. Out of like, it. we yeah. don't give a fuck, create the content, right. put it up there and that's that. Well, you know why? Because I don't think <clears throat> they think of themselves as like a podcast company when, no. in, I mean, they are like, they're very much so in a way. Like when Spotify is getting into it with Rogan and that's where all these questions about are they censoring and all that shit because they like care about it. I feel like Apple's like, we make... I've, we make phones and we make and we products make the, and then, yeah, exactly and you use them to upload this shit but we don't care what's going on the minute that they start caring I think is they're the, they're the tools that artists use right and I'm yeah. a big fan of Steve Jobs and I've read his biography twice and I've watched all the documentaries and the movies and they've always been that Do you, you know think that like I don't know enough about him to like would he have backed like no no, no let them say what they want 
I think so. Yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, I, yeah. I, th- I, re- I really think so. You know, his idea was you give this artist a tool and then he can create better, right? right. And that was back in the day with graphic design when Apple first came out. And, right. you know, when, you, when you're considering, you know, the, what the iPod was and it's like it, it's, it's just a piece of equipment that artists can use in order to get their, their you know, content out there, out there yeah. better. So, yeah, I think that Apple sort of takes that hands-off approach. They're not really they, – I, I don't really know about them deplatforming too many people. I think a few people have been kicked off of iTunes at this yeah. point but um you know as long as there's you know as long as the kkk is on paypal and all these yeah. things, I'm like, all right, you know, <laughs> i think they're a little bit bigger than legion of Saints, yeah, you right, know right. but eventually they will you know they will start looking at those platforms and this is why i created my own platform guest digital is my podcast network yeah and um you know i just never really wanted to be in a situation where i had a boss okay. um and once the industry you know, the industry never really gave me much love. And I've been on television and radio and I, I've done I've gone through the whole rigmarole and, and the traditional route in comedy. And I never had more success than just doing things myself and, mm-hmm. and understanding how to put my content in the hands of the people that like my content. Mm-hmm. Um, much more so than the other paths, which were just constantly conforming and changing yourself and and hey, you know, even if you do a late night set, you're like you know, here's my five minutes of jokes. Mm-hmm. Tell me what I got to take out. And you right. just mm-hmm. give it to them. And you go, cool, I'll take those words out. And you, you come just back. Just at a time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and right. it's a very, str- we're, we're sort of built to sell out young yeah, comedians. We're definitely. like, you know, in the entertainment in- industry in general, we're sort of built to sell out. Yeah. And um, I wasn't good at selling out because in order to sell out, you have to be likable. People mm-hmm. have to want you to win. They want to buy your shit, right? Yeah. And I just wasn't good at it. I was never good at getting in those situations. People are like, "This guy's a fucking asshole." I don't like him. Um, so I would, I would just rather do shit myself. <laughs> yeah, I've always kind of thought you need to be like super talented, super likable, and like or like super relatable. That's kind of like the you need like yeah. two of the three. You know, I, you I think if you're like and- being likable is the most important thing in the world, right? The absolute most important thing in the world. And every time I've been in a situation where I have to sit down at a meeting with industry or whatever it is, and I find myself being a phony, and I find myself doing yeah. all like telling the same stories that you're supposed to tell, you know, yeah, and yeah. I start to hate myself. Yeah. And then I start to grimace. And then the person sitting across from me is like, what the fuck is your problem, dude? And I'm like, I don't even want to be here. And that's been my whole career. My whole so, career. So the most important thing in the world, in your words, is being likable, and you are just not likable. Not likable at all, dude. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, it really is. If you want to be a, a, a lawyer, doctor, a librarian, if you want to, you know, whatever it is, whatever job, if people yeah. like you and they want you to win, it'll be that much easier. So, and, Or you got to be extremely talented, and I'm not really talented. Yeah, right. So I got, I don't really have anything. Right, right. I, all I can do is put well, one that's foot Front of the so other. I used to think of it as like you need two of those three things, and I'm not extremely talented. And I think in the beginning of my career, people liked me, and I was, and I, I always am kind of like relatable. I feel like I'm just like an average guy. Yeah, yeah. And then like halfway through my career, I lost the likable thing. So now I'm just just holding on to the relatability. <laughs> just like yeah. please relate to me. Well, I think yeah, you are relatable. And I think that's maybe why people, because I think there's a bunch of curmudgeons out there who who get what I say when I say that they go, oh, I completely get yeah, that, and they can relate right, to that. Right. Just being an not, unlikable I mean, I, dickhead. I'm always my default is fuck that, fuck him, fuck. And people think of it as like, oh, you you hate everything, and it's like I don't. It's just that my my opinion usually is to hate, to hate. But I don't actually hate a lot of things or a lot of people. But my first reaction to a song or a story or a topic or whatever is like, ah, fuck that. Yeah. And I think that it's not likable, but I think there's a lot of people out there who kind of react that same way. Yeah, I used to be. I think that way as well. I used to just be like, I I'll just say I. Broad stroke a genre of music. I was like, yeah, fuck that whole genre. <laughs> <laughs> All of it. You know, Every there's some single du- thing. And then I started creating content, right? I started like, you know, putting a podcast out. You put out a comedy special. You put out whatever, and then people start to criticize it. And you're like, "Hey, dude, you know what, man? We're all just trying out here." <laughs> so even when a new, shop, when a new movie wrong? comes out, and people are like, "Dude, that fucking movie sucked." I'm like, "You know what, dude? There's a lighting director, and he's got a kid <laughs> to go home to. You know, who do you think you are? What have you created?" <laughs> I always think about that. Where it's just like, like they're like, you know, we put out a podcast, and it takes an hour. You know, we put it twice a week, takes an hour and a half, two hours, whatever it t- is, and then like. It gets criticized, and you're like, God, like that didn't even take me that long. Where if someone like puts like a movie for two years, and it's like this movie fucking sucks. Oh like, yeah, dude, we like, all do I've that. Been, writing I've it for been a working decade. on that since 1978. <laughs> <laughs> like, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, I mean, dude, you <laughs> think about that. The amount of, like the, go, the new Ghostbusters came out. It was like, dude, I hope everyone involved burns. <laughs> 
to death right now. <laughs> fuck the Ghostbusters. Fuck the entire female race. And you're like, dude, that's somebody. Like most of it was good. Right. You're like the lighting was good. The yeah. special effects were decent. The cinematography. Maybe you I, didn't yeah. like certain elements, but I give them a little bit of credit. Five hundred people had to come together to create this one piece of content. That's very true. Man. Uh, the uh, how did how did so how did you know you Jay Dave like how did the Legion of Skanks come to be? Uh, we, well, I was doing podcasts probably like 11, 12 years ago yeah. before it was like everybody was doing podcasts. Right. And, uh, I was doing Robert Kelly's podcast a lot mm. and, um, just as, as a guest and, uh, yeah, me and me, Big J and Dave, we were just, you know, friends, just friends. Mm. You know, we both, me and Dave both looked up to Big J in comedy. We we're you he's know, just starting out. He's man. One the of the he tells I, those stories is just like nuts. You the, know? The, the, the language of funny, there's almost nobody who is is more fluent yeah. that can sit yeah, in a car a ride and just make you laugh, yeah. sit in a script writing, stand up, podcast, whatever it is. He just understands how to spit out the funniest verbiage, right? right? And right. that's, you know, it's... He's. I'm not a ton of a compliment. He's he's lazy as fuck, and it's all natural. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, when he came in here, he was telling the story about when he used to uh, like dress up uh, as characters for singing for kids' birthdays. Yeah. And he was talking about just dressing up as Winnie the Pooh so and fun. singing like Dr. Dr. Dre for the fucking kid in the hood or whatever. And it was just like. Yeah. This is that so was, that, that fucking funny. That was one of the hardest I've laughed on the podcast. Yeah, well, he's, that, just, he's just telling a story. It's not even like it wasn't scripted. It's not a thing. And it's just like every word out of his mouth is the right word at the right time and yeah. the right cadence and the right, you know. Just everything. understands the timing, the yeah, spaces yeah. in between words, right. the silence. Really, really gets it. Um, right. And uh, so fuck him. So, <laughs> but that is funny is that story relates to Legion of Skanks and how we started. So when we, um, Legion of Skanks, the name came from uh, Big J used to cheat on his wife all the time <laughs> like openly just <laughs> didn't fucking look, care just like it was gangs. <laughs> so she, one day she was like fine leave. We were, me and him were leaving his apartment to go out to shows she's like fine leave go be with your legion of skanks and me and you him both like, looked Ding! at each other we're like that's a fucking great band name <laughs> and we were playing Guitar Hero that's all we did was play Guitar Hero so our Guitar Hero name like 12 years ago 11 years ago was Legion of Skanks <laughs> and for like a year or two that's all it was <laughs> fucking grimy it was just a guitar Hero yeah, it was a guitar hero name for like two years. And then <laughs> we wrote a script uh, based off of that job that Jay had. And it was about mm. Jay doing this job where during the day he would dress up as kids' characters and at mm. night he would drive around strippers. And his two buddies who would yeah. sort of accompany him for rides. And Legion of Skanks, me, Jay, and Dave were written into this script. We actually just did a table read of that script with Ari Shafir on his YouTube channel. You guys can go, oh, go listen to that. Uh, it was terrible. Um, <laughs> And uh, so that's what it was for a while. We pitched this script around for a while. And honestly, it's just because we're not creative. We just used the name again. <laughs> we were like, we're going to use it for something. So eventually it became the the podcast name. And um, yeah, dude, we... I mean, it kind of, I feel like it's like, it applies now in a, in a weird way. It's like with the fans and the crew. Yeah. It's like... You're your own version of that. It'd be, now. It sort of like just came because it was it was his wife talking about these chicks that were, but it really became we became the skanks. The yeah, fan became fans, the skanks, fans became yeah. this legion. They call themselves skanks, and it, you know it's become a thing where people they really feel like they're a part of it. And that's podcasting in general, yeah. right? So podcasting when you sit down, the reason podcasting is such an incredible medium, radio podcasting, all of it, is because people feel as if. They not even feel like they truly are. You're you're sitting down and you're listening to a piece of content be created, and it mm -hmm. can never be created the exact same way again. Mm -hmm. The dynamic people could be in different moods, even if it's the same two people, right? right. Things that are yeah. going on. It's like a fingerprint. No two podcasts are going to be the same. Even if somebody you ever, tells the you same ever story. lose a podcast, like it wasn't recording or oh, yeah. whatever, and you try to like recreate it. Oh, it's not happening. You can't do it. Just That's, start, you got to literally go another new day. One. Yeah. New day. Yeah, yeah, don't right, even try right. to go back. Or don't even talk about the same topics. Like you cannot recreate it. It's impossible. And I think people like podcasting because they get to listen to that very natural flow of conversation, and you come up with these ideas, these unique neat concepts these personalities come together and you go holy shit we came to this conclusion and it's mm -hmm. it's you know it's a little bit of compromise for everybody involved and that's what's incredible about it yeah you know and i think that's when when spotify came out and, and they were talking about how they wanted to have the right to edit some of rogan's stuff and that was i think what made people freak out 
Because you're like, well, no, even that's when Rogan like gets it. it wrong, who yeah, cares? Right. That's a part of the process. Right. You, you know, you go like, oh, shit, he got it wrong. Okay, he's having a conversation. Everyone gets shit wrong every fucking day. You talk about right. relatability. Right. We're all getting shit wrong. We all get facts wrong. So why can't you be a fly on the wall? And why can't somebody get something wrong? Why does he have to issue an apology? And why does it have to be, you know, right. mainstream news? So I said, news? like, when, when you find out that a podcaster got something wrong, you just go like, oh. Shit, he got it wrong. That's yeah, no it. Like that's that's just how that's the reaction. Yeah. When you find out that your your buddy said something wrong in a conversation, it's like, oh well, oh, I believed him in the moment, but I realized yeah. it's wrong. It's not the end of the fucking yeah. world. Yeah. But I, I I'm always interested. I mean, there's, we we've been doing this for almost nine years now, eight eight or nine. So I mean, there's very few that we come across that have been doing it longer than us. Yeah. So I feel like there's always. I mean, is there anybody who precedes you guys that you like? That I mean, Bob, Bobby Kelly was yeah. Bobby Kelly. I don't know if you guys have a Bobby in here, but he's no, not yet. That's, uh, that's one guy we got to check off. Was he doing like a podcast or was it like yeah, comedy? Yeah, yeah. no, he was, was doing a, a podcast. Robert, Robert Kelly's, you know what, dude, podcast. Yeah, so and that's Bobby, even, so you that's know, got to be what like pushing fifteen years, probably twelve years ago, 12, something like yeah, that. It's crazy. Yeah, and I yeah I started doing it on his network. He created a podcast network before anybody had podcast networks, and mm -hmm. um. Yeah, Bobby is is one of the funniest people on the planet, and his his show was great. I mean, it was an extension sort of the Opie and Anthony world, mm -hmm. and I didn't even grow up in it. I grew up on Howard Stern. I, I listen to Howard Stern every day, you know, on my mm -hmm. way to high school. Um, but I think that a lot of those fans, they didn't have anywhere to go. You know, yeah. Opie and Anthony kind of lost. Yeah. When, they were like, what do we do now? And I think these some of these podcasts now sort of are carrying the torch. And mm -hmm. um, I think that, you know, a lot of it is just leftover people being like, yeah, I want to laugh at some fucked up comedy. And it is, just doesn't Is there exist. anybody you guys think of as like a competition, I guess, in that in that regard of like, we're the dirtiest, we're the most offensive, we don't give a fuck. No, there's I really nobody, don't think there's many left, man. No, there's nobody that's doing it like we... I mean, there were competitions is the wrong word. Like, there's guys like, you know, Tony Hinchcliffe, Kill Tony. Like, those guys don't give a fuck. Th mm -hmm. Those guys are doing some, you know, some ballsy shit. And they, mm -hmm. they, they, they don't... We go on their show. They don't give us any restrictions. I mean, obviously, we were on Anthony Cumia's network for a while. Mm -hmm. Cumia and uh, Compound Media, what they're doing over there, they don't give a fuck at all. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of mainstream and, and guys that are, you know, out there... I don't think really everyone's afraid to take risk. Mm -hmm. Everyone's just afraid to lose that opportunity. I mean, there are people that won't do Legion of Skanks as guests because, like, dude, I don't want to. I don't want to like be, be associated with. Yeah, it's not really. even what you say. It's For like, sure. just don't be on the show. For sure, that's Fuck. fucking wild. Yeah. yeah, like you could go on there and be as proper as you want. Yeah, and 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 denounce everything you guys are saying, but just the mere fact that you're on it would be yeah. People, too much. Uh, I just want to get my money right and then go say whatever I want. <laughs> just right, fucking that's gotta oh, dude, get there. I'm Once going on set. Like, <laughs> listen, one day oh, I'm gonna show up on Legion of Skanks in blackface, <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, oh shit, Lewis has got ten million in the bank. Yeah, <laughs> just realize <laughs> that. Like, 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 yeah. I'm just I'm yeah. gonna because because yeah. I used to say I was like, all right, I'm gonna get enough money and then I'll just disappear. I'll just mm -hmm. fucking mm -hmm. you'll, you'll be like, where's Lewis? He's gone one day. But that's not even it. I'll get so much money that I won't give a fuck. Yeah, that's that's yeah, what happened with like realize. Howard Stern. It's why Stern didn't apologize when they caught him um, using the N word and yeah. blackface and doing all the prosthetics. He was like, "Oh, what are you gonna do? You gonna fucking cancel me? I'll right. buy an island. Yeah. <laughs> I'll literally buy an island. You can't do anything." That's what he's saying. When you get the money and when your fan base is bigger than the mob, it's like you yeah. can't cancel me. That it, like that wasn't even news. It was like. That was, was a in, blip on the radar. It was. I, I don't even think it got a blip. Yeah, it was, he he just didn't. He was like he was like he didn't apologize. It was great, you yeah. know. And people that hate on Stern, I mean, like, that was, yeah, he said something like, "Yeah, I'm an asshole." He was like, <laughs> like "Yeah, what are you, well, that was what asshole. we did." He was like, "Would I make? Would I do it again? Maybe, maybe not." He wasn't yeah. even like. <laughs> he was so like, "Oh, what are you gonna yeah, do?" Just double down. Man. Yeah, it was beautiful. It was a great moment. I think that's the way you handle it because the reality is, it's it's bully mentality. So that woke mob and that that cancel culture mob. It, it, all it is is bully mentality. It's right? like reverse bullying in a way. Like they're they're usually the ones who got bullied who are now bullying. Exactly. Back. By the way, I've I've coined the, the phrase reverse bullying so many yeah. times because it's it's all these people they do it online. Some chick will be like they talk shit about you and then you're like fuck you bitch and all your friends are like yeah fuck you you fat bitch and she's like look everyone's bullying me. It's like no 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 you reverse bullied me and now you're yeah. dealing with the wrath yeah. of it. So right and that well we always just run into that too. It's like you're not used to talking shit to somebody who has like a big fan base yeah. who's going to get offended as well. Well, usually we usually tell our fans like let us handle it cuz we know how to do it, you know, better. Of course. But yeah, it's like, you know, you you're not you don't run into many people that have a legion of people who are going to yeah. be like fuck you, you But know? that that they want a reaction, so they want to mm -hmm. see you move, right? right? So they they go like, "Oh, cool, you'll apologize. I just want to see that you can apologize." Mm -hmm. They don't even really give a shit. No, they, no. They, so so what's going on with this Seth Simons? Is that his name? 
Uh, yeah. He he is like a comedy blogger. He covers like the scene and just talks shit about guys he doesn't like. He's yeah, like, he's... I've heard, I know it's you. I know it's Tim Dillon. I know it's like just basically the funny people. Yeah, all the, the funny, all the funny yeah. guys that are still doing edgy shit out there. Yeah. Is so, he a comic? I don't know if you don't want to. Talk I about think it. I he care, was like, a comic. He... Yeah, it's fine. I mean, I'll talk about it. It doesn't matter. He's a, he's a guy who um he's the guy who wrote the blog that sort of went viral when Shane got fired, right? Okay. So I don't want to say he got Shane fired because the reality is. You know, Shane said a lot of crazy shit on podcasts, and they were going to uncover that. Yeah, when Whether we had him not, here, I was like, you're just not an NBC it wasn't, guy. It, it was going to be a guy, problem. You know? Okay, yeah. when, when we heard that Shane got it, it was like, yeah, but he know, they know what you're saying on podcasts, right? And he was like, yeah. <laughs> they said it's cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that's, yeah, that, that, was, that was doomed. You so, know? But here's the problem with this guy, right? So he writes the article that goes viral, and yeah, I do believe somebody else would have written the same article, right? Mm -hmm. And Shane, Shane wasn't getting SNL like that. But it's almost like the... He gloats about it like, mm -hmm. look what I did. And then he tries to write more articles. Like his he's his thing has become that he's he's trying to get guys like me in trouble. Um, and he's trying to sort of kick up dust and, and, and get the cancel culture mob after us. Um he he struck gold, he struck lightning with that one article. Mm -hmm. He's written 10 fucking articles since nobody cares. Yeah. You like, know, who's like, even his audience? It's, it's like your fans are reading it just saying, fuck you. I don't, I don't, I don't think even, he has his own audience to, I don't to even actually know. rally. I, I, you know? If I, look, if I was getting SNL or, or some sort of like mm -hmm. big mainstream show, maybe he can kick up some dust. Yeah. Um, but it's like, what are you, I, like, who are you writing articles for? It's That's, like, look, yeah. the Legion of Skanks, they say crazy shit. It's like, okay, we're podcasters. Yeah, we named ourselves the most offensive yeah. podcast yeah. on earth. So <laughs> this guy, he has this, uh, he, you know, he essentially has it out for us you know at this point once again emotion sells right mm -hmm. so what these people do is they create more emotion for us you know we have a festival mm -hmm. skank fest we have a podcast mm -hmm. network cast digital our fan base every time they say something our fan base they strengthen the relationship i know yeah we say that all the time too i want you know when we had louis ck show up for skank fest a couple of years ago um when he was after he was canceled you know we had uh however many millions of impressions online you know half of them were people saying uh yeah you know, fuck this venue, they should be canceled and shut down. But we never really, we weren't talking about that. When I talked about it, when I went to sponsors and said, hey, just so you know, we had 20 million impressions last year, the yeah. sponsors just went, cool. Yeah, right. Like right, that, right. that yeah. it's as simple as that. So the, the more they talk about it, the, literally in a very literal sense, the more they line my pockets. Yeah. So I, I wanna, please keep on writing articles, keep on getting my fan base to be that much more emotional. Mm -hmm. um, because I, I think it only strengthens what we have. So and what happened over the summer with this dude who pulls you off stage? What was ever the, the repercussions of that? Oh, was that a, a, was a brother or a boyfriend? I think I initially heard it was a boyfriend. So of yeah, a girl, it was Big J got brother? pulled. Big J got yeah, pulled Big off Jay, stage. Sorry, yeah, yeah. So we were at a show and uh, Big J was trashing this girl. She was just drunk and being a fucking idiot. So he's just you know trashing her. And at that point, I like it was he was trashing her so good that I just went over next to the stage to, to get a better like I wanted yeah. to hear it because it was so funny because this girl's just drunk. And, you know, she's like, fuck you, you're all racist. And she's, like, yelling at the crowd. The crowd's just cackling, <laughs> laughing yeah. at her face. Oh, everyone's pointing and laughing. <laughs> to the point where it's begin she's getting more angry the more they're laughing. And the more she's getting angry, the more they're yeah. laughing. So it's just It's this like, it's it's a microcosm of what you just described with the, the yeah. bloggers. It's like, you talk your shit and complain, and we love it. And yes, just, and they're you know. fucking And everyone at this point is just having a ball, having a blast. <laughs> she goes to leave, right? And Big J is like, all right, see you later, blah, blah, blah. She's still trashing her. So her brother at that point, bum rushes the stage and is like, that's my fucking sister. And he uh, he grabbed Big J by the leg and just pulled him off the stage. And uh, you see me run out yeah, from you behind. you were right, I mean. Yeah, dude, I try. I, You're I mean, not I'm, a dude I want pouncing on me. Well, I'm too <laughs> fat and slow, so I didn't make it. He pulled Jay off the stage, and I just I climbed down slowly. Um, but, yeah, it was, people get fucking stupid. Yeah. You know. Was, I mean, you know. Nothing, nothing came up. Big Jay yeah, wasn't hurt. He wasn't hurt. Press charges or something. We like, tried to, but yeah, it was, I the, mean, the amount, the, uh, like, the amount the of effort, yeah, yeah, to go back to fucking and shit, Pennsylvania, you know? to, to, it's just not worth it. Nobody got hurt, so. And he got the the worst of it anyway like the fans i think roughed him up a little bit i yeah. i heard i didn't see anything obviously um and uh yeah apparently uh, he maced himself that's what i heard <laughs> yeah. he may have maced himself he may have kicked himself a bunch in the chest <laughs> i don't know um walked into a couple doors the next day yeah who knows? Thing, you know? who knows you yeah. uh, know how uh how bad did the uh the election hurt was that was that tough for you or did you uh you just kind of keep it moving 
Uh, is that going to be a, a yearly? Uh, it's a, two a years. Four, two years. Okay. He's two a year president. term for Ari. He's a president that's, for two that's years. A two year reign of terror, yeah. man. That is. Has have, has he enacted anything? Did he change any rules? Like, well, you're what allowed. Does the president he's allowed do? to call in one, uh, once per episode and mute somebody's microphone. Oof. It's been my episode, my microphone every episode for the whole no, show. Just, no, for a minute. Oh, one okay. minute. One minute muting power. He could. Uh, he I could, love this yeah. shit. I fucking love how the skanks does this. I think it's amazing. Yeah, he could veto any bit. So we ever, for the past five years we've done. <laughs> something called the badass battle of the bands and we you have like one band every year wins mm -hmm. a few thousand bucks and they get you know their sh their their songs played before the show every every week for a mm -hmm. month and it's a big deal for these like young bands around the country yeah, he just nixed it nixed it <laughs> he's like no he's like i hate it spite, he just doesn't like it <laughs> he doesn't even not like it he just <laughs> he just <laughs> Is a fucking asshole. <laughs> just like crushing some some band's dreams. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's fucking incredible, so man. We'll, that we'll is see what happens. Your shit. Uh, and and so, is there anything next for the skanks? Do you guys even think in, in terms like that? Like, do you have any? Oh, you got this fight. What's going on with this MMA fight? Uh, so do you guys know Jason Ellis? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I know the name. I know, I know. I'm not, I'm not plugged into the MMA world or, or as much as. So Jason Ellis is a is a radio host. He hosts um, Jason Ellis Show on Sirius XM. Mm -hmm. Former professional skateboarder and former professional mixed martial artist. He's got a couple right. of fights. Um, I did his. He does a thing called Ellis Mania every year, which is essentially, you know, I think you guys do like rough and rowdy or something yeah. similar. Yeah. It's a similar concept, mm -hmm. I, I believe. Whereas his fans show up, they fight each other, they do silly fights, they do roller skate fights. Fights, they, you know, mm -hmm. a bunch of different, you know, events. And last year, I ended up, um, or I guess two years ago now, I ended up doing an MMA fight against another comedian. Won that fight. I, I I'm not an athlete. Never trained for anything in my life. Um, but it was a cool experience. Really, really cool experience. So since and you won, uh, yeah, I won. Yeah. I ended up winning a decision. And Jason Ellis, who's got a lot of experience. Um, somebody asked him if he would ever fight me, and then he started talking shit. He was like, oh, I, he's, he's Australian, so I'm not going to do an Australian accent, but he's like, oh, kick his ass, Mike. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so then I just took the bait, and I was like, well, fuck it. All right, dude, I'll fight you, just because. Why not? Um, well... You so know, that that's, you might get your head beat in like that, that that's that, what I would be worried of. But yeah, you know, he's kind of a scary dude. I gotta be honest yeah. with you. It's it's definitely a much uh, tougher challenge than the last comedian that I fought. But I don't know, dude. The way that I look at it is like I train a bunch, I get in shape, right? At the end of it, I gotta fight this guy. I'll make a bunch of money. Mm -hmm. Who gives a shit? What's the worst that could happen? I get beat up. I then I'm in great shape at the end of it. I got a bunch of money in my pocket. If somebody said I'm gonna give I'm gonna give you fucking abs and put thousands mm -hmm. of dollars in your pocket, all you gotta do is let Jason Ellis punch you in the head, you probably do it. Right. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. I think I think mm -hmm. most people would. Mm -hmm. Um I just don't really have I don't know if you I don't know if you ever trained any martial arts. I haven't done a ton. Um for the last fight and now for the past few months I've been doing it pretty seriously. Um it's fun. It's mm -hmm. really fun. If you go and spar and you go in and getting punched and kicked, adrenaline sort of kicks in. You don't really feel the pain that way. You're not going mm -hmm. like, ooh, ow, ooh. It's not like your friend's punching the arm on, on your birthday, right? Yeah, yeah, You're yeah. You're competing, and it is a, you know, anybody who's ever trained before, they know what it's like. It's a cool experience. Overall, it's very, very cool. So um, that's what's going on. I don't think of myself as a real mixed martial artist. Mm -hmm. um, I know that I'm probably biting off more than I can chew. But I do have an undying in belief in my ability to accomplish any goal. And if the goal is beating up a 50-year-old Australian guy, if that's it, if that's the fucking hill that I got to get over. Yeah, we're not, that's we're not it, setting it too high. That's not fuck. I got to look at my seven-year-old son in the face and say he can do whatever he wants to do with his life. There's nothing that he can't do. Yeah. I can't beat up a 50-year-old Australian. <laughs> That's the hill I can't get over. What type of father am I? So you got everything on the line here. You yeah, got you I'm put just, your fatherhood on the line, man. Uh, well, that's you put your son's future on the line. I here. really think of it that way, yeah. though. It's almost like but that. But now, all right, but there's multiple paths to get there. That's not. I, I believe yeah. there's almost anything in life if you want to do it. There's a path to get there. There's a series of decisions you can right. make to get you from point A to point B to point C to point Z, right? Whatever it is. It could be a billionaire. It could mm -hmm. be fucking becoming an Olympian, whatever it is. Right. For almost anybody in the world, I really believe that deep down inside. Right. So you just got to make those choices. Yeah. Is that yeah. line, Jason Ellis beating him in a fucking physical company, is that the line that All I right. can't cross? He's about my size. He's, he's, we're going to weigh 205 pounds. He's about six foot, six one. And how old are you? I'm um, 38. All right, so he's got the he's, he's older, but he's got experience. He's got a lot more experience. Yeah. He's got he's he's when athletic. Was his last fight? Uh, a few years ago, but he's athletic. He's you know he's yeah. got a, a but I mean the reality is you're punching each other in the face. But it, see, that's what I would worry about with MMA is like yeah maybe we can all just like slug it out, but like is he gonna like 
Because he'd have like submission holds and shit. That oh yeah, he'll yeah, have all that. I mean, he's got you're, a ton of jiu-jitsu experience. Are you experience. learning that? Oh yeah, dude. I trained with that, Mickey Gall as a UFC. Yeah. Uh, that, that was what would scare me. Is like he's gonna put me in some hold I've never even fucking heard of, and I'm you know. Yeah, I, I, I've, I've I've I will I put a lot of time. In. I've been training really really. I think I I feel like I look pretty good at this point. I was yeah. just saying, you like when you came in here, I, I didn't know. What, I was like, yourself. oh, you're like a you're you're a big dude. Yeah, yeah. I I feel pretty good about it. And the reality is, wor- also worst case scenario is like, you know, let's say I lose this fight. I am that much better able to handle myself, mm. right? I'm that mm-hmm. much able to protect myself, my family, my Definitely. girlfriend, my son, my loved ones. So there's all of this plus side. And the only negative side of it is losing a fight. Right. I don't know if you've ever and lost. Honestly, I've got my me, ass kicked before. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and and it feels like, I don't even want to talk too much about losing it because I don't want to put that out there in, that, in the universe. But it's like, if he's the one with the experience and he's... He's got to win, way more to lose, lose than me. So if he whatever. if he doesn't finish me in the first, he fucking loses, yeah, in my opinion. Right, okay, right, right. and I'm gonna tell you right now, I don't think he's gonna finish me in the first. Right. I'll tell you right now, I I'm training to win this fight. I'm training to knock this guy out. Yeah. So whenever the fight does happen, we don't have a date for it yet. He's recovering from knee surgery. I just kick him in the fucking knees, man, <laughs> dude. I'm well. Yeah, also I have like a heart thing. Punch so him in the heart. Let's I've been go. doing just one inch punch, just over and over again, <laughs> practicing that. A lot of knee kicks. <laughs> if I and people are like, dude, what? If you killed him, uh, like I would feel like a god amongst men. If I if I actually <laughs> I killed kill him, him in the fucking the first death in MMA, North American MMA, I would feel like I, I that'd be pretty badass. I, w- I don't want him to die. I'm just saying that I wouldn't feel bad. That's his own choice. I love it, dude. All right, we're gonna go next door and answer the internet if you got a little bit more time. Yes, but, sir. Uh, Legion of Skanks is everywhere. Uh, you have to stand. Uh, what every Monday, Monday nights? nights? Yeah, Monday yeah. nights. Legion of Skanks at the stand live. Uh, we're outdoors as, as long as the weather permits. And uh, yeah, my podcast network, Gas Digital Network. I got three shows that I host. Believe you me, with Michael Bisping, who's a former UFC middleweight champion, and then the Real Ass Podcast. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, Gas Digital. It's you know uh, I think like ten thousand hours of content streaming at your fingertips. So awesome, uh, yeah, go check it out. Great shit. I'm gonna hit you with a little YouTube saber metrics. Okay. Only 15% of people who watch the videos on the KFC Radio channel are actually subscribed. That means oh, you fucking lurkers. I'm right? tired. Yeah, free, I'm tired 85% of lurkers. freeloaders. Retweet, like, fucking uh, heart on Instagram. Rate, review, subscribe. subscribe. If you enjoy content, double tap it. Literally, double tap to subscribe. Just click. It doesn't. I think you only have to click it once. Not even double. Well, look at just one fine. click. But I'm not a mathematician. Just a one click works. Because that, that's what it is. I don't want. If you double click, you might subscribe and then unsubscribe. Oh, true. So one, just one well, click. Three clicks. Three clicks to subscribe because otherwise, I mean, it, it literally doesn't affect you at all, and it will basically make our careers it, so much better. Oh, Please so much better. Do it. Oh, you'll get us so good. Please. You'll get us going. Come so on. Eighty-five percent. You triple. Don't like, be poor. Triple time. Do the thing. The subscribe thing. Smash that button, as they say.